Good afternoon, folks. If this is your second second of my streams today, welcome back. If not, welcome. I am going to be continuing my big Saturday stream day with Shadows Over Loathing, a very fun, silly game made by fun, silly people who also have uh, previously made West of Loathing, which is the game prior to this. And prior to that, they have a uh, Kingdom of Loathing, which is a browser-based like RPG, like RPG that has been around for a billion, seems like a billion years, which is also good fun. But yeah, this is uh, Shadows of the Loathing. It came out uh, in November, out of nowhere, which is fun. It's a really fun game, and we're going to be playing more of it. But before we get to that, I am fundraising for the LGBTQ Freedom Fund. Let me pull stuff up here, which helps uh, secure, uh, helps pay bail to secure the safety and liberty of individuals in jail and immigration detention, especially for LGBTQ folks who are disproportionately affected by this because society is a fucking nightmare. Anyway, I'm fundraising for that, and below my stream, there should be a donation button you can click to donate directly. I also have a donate command that should give you that same info, and I have a chat bot that should do the same every so often. Any way you choose to support the LGBTQ fund, the Freedom Fund is greatly appreciated. It helps people like me and people that I love and care about. I love and care about my cat, too. I don't think he's a, he might be LGBTQ. He's like kind of a little, he's a little gay man. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we're going to get started with the game. Well, let me pull it up here. Let's see. Shadows overloading. Hit play. Minimize that. And I might mute up and finish eating some of my food real quick. Because I've got, I got lunch and all that. We can listen to this this pretty this this cool music while I eat some food. Hello Hachiko. Thanks for being here. It's awesome. It's always awesome seeing you. Yeah, I'm going to mute up real quick and continue eating some some smunching foods.
All right, I have returned. Thank you for your patience. I had some food. I didn't want to get cold, so I just I decided it's time to finish it. All right, let's say continue. We are in Grandpa Joe's distillery where we last left off. We uh had to deal with some vampires. <laughs> it is. This is uh from uh, Kingdom of the Kingdom of Loathing People. Yeah, this shit's just real good. This this game came out in November. Out of they didn't say they were making a game and they just like oh hey here here's a game it's like what <laughs> <clears throat> so we are uh, in the distillery here let's see this is where uh, grandpa joe's extra fancy garlic schnapps <laughs> well maybe it wasn't prohibition to put this place out of business yeah there were a bunch of vampires here so we let this out and the, the vampires all ran away because of the garlic schnapps <laughs> Uh, yeah, so far this game is, is amazing. I'm having a great time. We are a, uh, we are Martini, the jazz agent. <clears throat> this is our, uh, our comrade. It's the unsinkable Molly Buttons. She shoots you a wink. Alright. Let's see. Oh, we haven't been to the fairy lair yet. I guess we can go there and see what fresh horrors await us. You wander off the main path and stroll along among the trees for a bit. It's nice to get out in nature for a bit. At least until you walk into an invisible spider web and it gets all tangled in your hair. While flailing around, disgusted, trying to get it off of you, you stumble into a second spider web, which goes right across your face. Ah! And that's how, staggeringly blindly, you got yourself taken up in a third spider web. It's one much larger and stronger and made to trap prey of more or lesser size. The extremely large spider sitting in the corner of the web looks delighted to see you. And as much as a spider can smile, this one's smile is poison dripping off of it. You know what? Fuck you, spider. Alright, so we got Turt, Turt the friend here can heal someone for two damage a round. Oh, Molly's moving first. Uh, let's see. She can. She has a. She has a Tommy gun. Cause this is the 1920s, so there's like Tommy guns and like Cthulhu and Prohibition and just. <clears throat> and as a jazz agent, we have access to uh, music powers. <clears throat> so we'll use Sacks of Violence, which adds sax to the soundtrack. Well, we're we're a little we're a little powerful. <laughs> so yeah, that spider was no problem. Spider leg wand, spider venom sack, spider webs, creepy forest fetish. Turk grows stronger. Yes, more power. You won. Congratulations on not being too grossed out to fight. Like I probably would have been. All right. Fairy lair. Oh Jesus! What is this? This must of twigs and sap as a fairy nest. <clears throat> you fumble blindly into the nest and find a knife. You pull the knife out of your hand, out of your hand flush and stick it in your pocket. We got a fairy knife. You already searched this nest. Trash fairies. The, the fairies put up their tiny dukes as you approach. <laughs> Alright, so she can probably better for her just to kind of clobber the one with the most HP with uh with her her knee her cap knee. Excuse me. Okay, and then we'll do sacks of violence and just hurt everyone for three. Let's see, can I can I off them with um? Uh, I wouldn't quite hurt them. It would. It will. It will kill. The, this will kill them, though. We'll kill them. Oh, they're gonna explode anyway. So. Oh, well, actually, I might be able to finish them off. With, I might have enough damage too. All right, cool. <laughs> you 
You showed those you showed those fairies who's bigger and tougher than a fairy. <laughs> Us, apparently. A fairy skull wand, ugh. Fairy dust. <laughs> it's weird that such vile creatures can have such nice dandruff. Mmm. Well, there's another fairy nest over here, it looks like. We got a <laughs> got a hand injury! <laughs> This nest contains nothing but garbage and a mouse trap, but snap shut in your hand. You've injured your hand and it's making things slightly harder to handle. Oh, that's unfortunate. More belligerent fairies. Not more belligerent than usual, just more of them. <laughs> you know what? Let's have Molly just spray bullets at random enemies. Leave turn alone! Good job, Turt. You did you did your part. Um sacks of violence. Let's see. Well, uh, can we off this one? We can. I'll kill this one. Vicious jab! Leave Turt alone! Got him. Showed those fairies who's the fairest of them all. <laughs> fairy charm, magical weapon damage, fairy cake. To a fairy, this is a huge birthday cake. To you, it's a grisly reminder that you reminder that you killed a fairy on its birthday. <laughs> I'm the fairest of them all. It's a weird effigy. Wow, this thing is horrible. It must be meant to scare humans away. Yeah. It's... Wait, seriously, want to keep this obviously evil, obviously extremely ugly statue back to your room? The room where you sleep. You're not going to be able to drag it out here with the fairies still running loose in the area. <laughs> oh, good point. We need the the, the cursed effigy. Yet another fairy nest. Fairies was meant one of the wealthier family fairy families. Yeah, I I got this from the uh, vampires that I, I fought against because that in the equipment in this game the boots all distinctly make you walk a different way. Like if we do the, the pipe shoes, we roll around and make weird noises. Let's see if we do um. The Birkin Glocks, which are from the uh, Glockins, the Glocklins. We walk around and make fucking like noises like that. Heavy boots. Stomp around. Uh, let's see. Uh, foot gloves. <laughs> walk around in your hands. This basically replaces the, uh, the the silly walking from the first game as like equipment items. Extra high heels. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, pipe shoes, saddle shoes. File flip flops. <laughs> Just kicking around. And then my previous favorite was the single shoe that we first got. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the floating around's just just pretty cool. These were <laughs> these were invented when a cobbler accidentally mispronounced vampire bats. So vampire <laughs> Vampire bats, not they're vampire boots! Ooh. There's already more fairies. Huh, there are a lot of fairies guarding that nest. Must be something good inside. <clears throat> clobber this one. Oh, wow. They got extra clobbered. Oh, the, fair the fairy gun mother! <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. 
I love the names the names they have for all like all these creatures and things. They're just ridiculous. I love it. <clears throat> I'm fairly powerful. <laughs> you won. Access to undoubtedly wonderful nest is now yours. I am vibrating with nest related excitement. <clears throat> huh, it's full of rocks. I am a psychogeologist, so I can, like, understand the thoughts and feelings of rocks. I can get resources from you. Extract all the useful compounds from the rocks. An impenetrable shellac. Some some shellac comes from insects, but if you don't, but if you don't know that, it can come from basically anywhere. <laughs> we got some powerful grit <clears throat> and XP. Now let's fight some more fairies. Let's see if I can find one I can one-shot with, um, her club. It's probably gonna be this one. <clears throat> Twig dump! Bonk. Go, Turk, go! Good job! Some of these have relatively low HP. <clears throat> Mushling, okay, that one's basically free because they don't really even do anything. Okay, that one's gonna explode doing damage, so. <clears throat> now we can throw this uh, Glocklin ball, kill this one, so. Uh... <laughs> just smash its little head in. And we can kill this one because the other one's just gonna blow itself up and end the battle anyway, so we might as well. This one's just gonna, gonna kill itself. Which basically means nothing. You, you pick through the pile of loose wings and limbs to see if the fairies had anything worth taking. A fairy star wand. Oh, that's actually pretty good if I was a magical character. Squirrel cheese! Fairies keep squirrel squirrels the way we used to keep cows. One can only hope that someday they'll face a similar reckoning. <clears throat> this better be worth it. Cond hey, a ring! One of the fairies was probably using it as a crown. Oh! That's actually really good. I use Orcus Strike a lot, <laughs> as you've noticed. The famed avant-garde band leader, Fubert Guggins, commissioned jewelry made out of conductor's batons so he could o operate several orchestras at once. <laughs> that might be worth equipping, because I think right now we have the Fop Bum Egg Ring, which gets us extra meat, but this will like ex make us do more damage, or uh, become more powerful. Now we can probably s take the, uh, the, the horrible effigy back with us. Wow, this thing is horrible. It must be meant to scare humans away. You drag the horrible sculpture to the bus stop. A bus arrives and refuses to pick you up. Because of the horrible sculpture, I mean. Spend the next several hours dragging it back to your room. <laughs> you hang the cow skull over your desk. If anyone asks, I'll tell you. I'll tell them you killed the cow yourself. Put the you can put, you put the cave crystal. You put the crist you put the crystal crystal gave you back on the shelf. Is that clear, crystal? <laughs> Oh yeah, we have some we have some fun things. We've got this this uh, crescent throne here. It, it's it's mocking the uh, the Game of Thrones throne with all like the swords or whatever. It's just a bunch of wrenches. <laughs> <clears throat> we got our awful eff effigy. Looking at this thing makes you mad. Pretend to fight it. You, you you duck and weave, bob and swat. Are you shadow boxing or the shadows boxing you? They're all charged up with violent fairy magic. <laughs> and these things tend to give you a buff, so I think I already have the buff for the wrench thing. Let's uh, look at these. 
Let's rub the crystal. Twinkling fingers. Everything here has been reduced to ash. Yeah, we had a we had a suitcase full of stuff we initially brought with us, but uh, it caught on fire. Let's see, what's this? Someone has given you a nightstand. There's a briefcase and a note on top. Take one and read the other. No reads. Mar. The quality of your work at the Sterling has been noted as excellent. I will contact you in a telephonular manner manner with further duties. Got a briefcase full of me. Honest work for dishonest pay. <laughs> Good old nightstand. Huh, was this plant pot always here? It's your little tentacle buddy. It's your little tentacle buddy. Thanks, great. <laughs> Tickle the tentacles. A message for me? Call Dante, call the mob back. Yeah, we're working with the mob. Don Toblerone verbalizing. Hi, Don, it's me. Ah, Splendiferous. Kudos on your tri triumphal completion of my previous ass assignation. You're welcome, is that all? In fact, I have another item of business to be attentuated, which I believe to be su suited marvelously to one of your skills. Which one? No, I mean, well, regardlessly, I require that you proceed apace to Crystal Dream Lake, wherein it is located a Purveyor of tools and implements of construction. Say again? You might vernacularize it as a hardware store. Ah, right. You guys run out of cement or something? We have a necessity that you perform upon this place. A business will ca categorize a shakedown. <laughs> they owe you meat? No. We are merely desirous that the local commercialist retail emporia feel a measure of intimidation. Okay, I guess I can handle that. Sure. Charles seems to want to talk to you. What's up, Charles? Got something you might find handy. I finally found the time to check out the store behind me, and it turns out w there was an old bricked-up passageway back there. It leads right to the purple door. Well, that's pretty convenient. Thanks, Charles. Hey, don't mention it, kiddo. Don't leave without mentioning it. Gabby's here having a fucking hoot. These people are obviously on a second date and you shouldn't bother them. <laughs> I think they were on a first date earlier. Hi Don, it's me, the cool cat. Hey Nikora, you are a cool cat, welcome. Hey Dan, your spoon is kind of inconvenient. Nah, nah baby, that spoon isn't for spitting in. That's gone out of style now that mass produced cigarettes are readily available anyway. No, that is a bona fide historical artifact. Why am I hovering menacingly? Because I got I got a pair of vampire boots that let me hover menacingly. <laughs> there's a there's an actual explanation for it. What really? That's right. Belonged to a famous adventurer from Frisco just before the turn of the century. Really? Who? Well, no one's exactly sure. A lot of people think it belonged to Mumfler Fumperdink. Oh, okay, that's funny. Because when Markiplier played these the the original. Uh, uh, West of Loathing. That was his character's name, so they put him, his character, in the game as lore. I was watching Mark play play parts of this game too, not past what I'm at, but like just watching him play it, and he was like, "Oh, it must be a coincidence. Must be reading the save file." And no, that they literally put his character's name in the game. That's funny. Anyway. <clears throat> Incinerate a pawn. How do you like these apples? Nice move. Aw, <laughs> oh, crap. <clears throat> the lewd pawn ruse. Okay, I think we need certain uh, thingies there. Oh, kitty. Well, we have a we have a cursed uh, compass that we need to uh, uncurse. So let's do so. It's the uncursing machine, the shadow tinted compass. You sit with the compass in both hands as the machine whirs and winds and shakes around you. The machine you feel is frustrated. Some internal mechanism is swinging wildly, frantically. Then crack. Figures out whatever it needed to, what needed to, and there's no more curse. Not in the compass, not anymore. 
still points to Old North, though, so it's practically useless. You remove the curse from this compass, making it just a comp. <laughs> The compass's curse is now turned six into an uncursing machine. Dare you project your consciousness inside? I will dare. Oh. Is this like a baseball game? Gosh, that looks sore. You okay, fella? I'm disgusted that it's come to this. We all know you're the weak link of the team. Some would say the team accountant shouldn't even be allowed in the field, but you tell me. Did all my years of including you in the team lunches and burpees make you into a baseball player? I'm ready to hit the balls. That's what I wanted to hear. Your destiny's out there on the diamond, son. Go on, hit, into, go on, hit it into the parking lot. Say, coach, why'd you wear that funny-looking hat? Gee, coach, you think Maribel will ever marry me? Excuse me, coach. I gotta go hit something. Like, what's... This is madness. That foolhardy coach is gonna get us all killed. What do you think we ought to do? Let's get out of here. Go home. Don't you think... Don't, don't you think things were just fine the way they were? Why are we doing this? You mean, playing baseball? He looks you dead in the eye and manages a nerve to chuckle. <laughs> yeah, that's right, kid. Alright, we'll see ya. I'm gonna go play baseball. Hello, coach. Three more minds broken by baseball. Is this like blaze ball instead? Plunkett Street pushover. Oh, shit. Oh. I got a little too close. Powerful baseball team. Like hit by ghost baseballs. <laughs> I don't think. Can I even hit anything? I, I. I don't know if I'm just doing something wrong. There's no talking in baseball, son. Get out there! Say, coach, why do you wear that funny hat? Nothing funny about it, son. It's a cloche. The coach's cloche. It's traditional. What's with these compasses, coach? My swimming won't connect with them. I know it must be overwhelming. All I can tell you is to stay calm and remember that in baseball, it's about what you do hit. Why is the other team getting points when I swing? That's baseball, son. If the other team ever feels physically intimidated, that's an automatic five-point penalty. <laughs> And how am I supposed to win it all? Quit gabbing and get back out there. Don't you don't you know leaving the field to talk to the coach is a ten point penalty? Gee, coach, you think Mirabel will ever marry me? I can't answer that, son. All I can tell you is that Mirabel has married every World Series MVP since the series was first contested in 1903. You work out the rest. Alright. <laughs> I don't know if I'm like hitting them or like they hitting me. I don't understand what's going on. Son, my number one boy, you did it, you son of a bitch, you won, you son of a, <laughs> son of a gun, son of a bitch, you won the whole damn game. Did I, do, did I really do good, coach? Look at the scoreboard, it's zero to hole, that's the whole ball game. Couldn't have done without you. 
I'll get over here, champ, and poke her up. Here comes the co coach's big sniff. What? Oh. So we weren't supposed to actually play baseball at all. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Funny, the compass feels ex extremely reassuring now that it's back to being an ordinary little thing in your hand. Not something hurled at your head in an oversized ghostly form from every cardinal direction. It glows faintly. Ooh, that's actually pretty good. To think you were ever scared of a little old compass. Gee, coach, you ever think Maribel will ever marry me? I don't know, Mar, but you don't need to call me coach. We're friends. Call me Jessica. Okay, couch. Oh, I mean coach. Oh, I mean Jessica. <laughs> Maybe take it easy with that machine for a little while. <laughs> I got that compass. Oh, good. Not not too much of an ordeal, I hope. Could have been worse, I guess. There were some horrible fairies. What? No, don't tell me. No, no, don't tell me. Just encourage that thing and then get some rest. I'm a step ahead of you. Great. Nice work. I think the next artifact is a book. I'll have the location narrowed down by morning. Sounds good. Time to sleep. Charles flies you down. I got some applicants for a new storefront I fixed over here. Over on the other side of the Cola Wars surplus store. Got a second to pick one? Sure. Tru the first applicant is tr Truncheons and Bludgeons. This fellow is really excited about weaponry. The second is La Table and Chanty. It's a high-end kitchen store. Magical utensils and the like. And the last applicant is Jardware's Hardware. I guess if your name is Jardware, your, your options for rhyming business names are pretty limited. We could use a hardware store. Good old Jardware. You're ready to make you're ready to make the transition from Crystal Dream to regular dreams. Dreams! Woo! Time to dream. Tentacle it's our little tentacle buddy. Another fitful dream. This this represents your growing mistrust of your bed. <laughs> If you repeat it enough times, it starts to sound like a real word. Glaxton, 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 Glaxton. There's spider webs, fairies, cement mixer, museum of skulls. It's a, muse it's a museum of skulls, obviously. Wait a minute. One of these skulls is yours, and it's missing its teeth. Give it the ones you're carrying. You put the, you put the teeth back in your skull. It tries to thank you, but you have no tongue. You're not sure what this is, but you're sure, you're sure what it isn't. <laughs> Huh. You don't you don't want to talk about this museum anymore. <laughs> this woman scowls at you. You better have some good news for me, Terrence. Hog futures are up 10 points. <coughs> the good news is everything is in order, Madam President. Good. The damn project is complete. This isn't me. It's running at maximum capacity, ma'am. Ma You'll have all the electricity you need. And what about the interloper? I'll show you an interloper. My research proceeds apace. Surveillance has indicated that their last name is Teeny. Their mother is Miss, Mr. Morris's sister. Any relative of, Mur of Murray Morris is an enemy of ours. Find them and get them out of the picture. Of course, Madam President. Both Terrence and the President went out of existence with an ominous pop. You're ready for this dream to be over. And how? It's the Sandwich Museum! It's as if there is some sort of invisible wall here. You can go no further. A doorway right back to the waking world. This ga this game is a trip. Is what this game is. <laughs> well, let's let's touch up our things again. To get all our buffs back. Heavy is the hand. Three damage to range weapon range weapons, which includes our little um our derringer. Pew, 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 pew. No shows have been invented yet. Uh, let's see. Let's see food. We gonna eat some squirrel cheese. 
I'm gonna give you a bloodle, which is a blood strudel. It's piping out strudel filled with blood instead of, I don't know, raspberries. We need a cheese loaf. Extra hard candy. A bucket of chum. Ugh. Let's eat a cheese loaf to get some moxie. Cursed by an apps of the crackers, eat the cheese loaf with your bare hands. In the end, you are unclean both inside and out. <laughs> Alright, potions. Let's see. We should have a good amount of potions we could use. Stylish pomade is more moxie. Cosmetic wine is more moxie. Red cola is HP. Sandwich cream is sleaze armor. Hard candy. Moxie. Hmm. Might as well do something with get moxie. Let's drink some of cosmetic wine. You drink the false wine. It doesn't taste like anything at all, which makes it difficult to, to produce a set of pretentious tasting notes. Your lips are stained with artificial wine coloring. I'll still manage. <laughs> okay, com okay, combat items, quest items. I don't have enough mystically to do that. I don't know, how much XP do I even have? I haven't really been paying attention to that. 74? Hmm. Uh, one more and we could get another mysticality, which we probably should just passively boost our stuff. Alright, well, it's your little tentacle buddy. Morning, Mar, how you feeling? Uh, fine, I guess. I've been having weird dreams. Oh, like the one where you're driving a car, but you're in the back seat and you can't reach any of the controls? I can't remember very clearly, but I think it was weirder than that. I really hate that one. Anyway, I found the next curse thing. It's a hardcover book about yay big, and it's somewhere on the campus of the Seaside Institute of Technology in Porkham. Ready to go? I haven't even had any coffee yet. I'm sure you'll be able to find coffee when you get there. They probably invented some kind of high-powered science coffee or something. Alright, alright. Do you have a map of the place? No, but it's a college campus. It can't be that hard to find your way around. College students do it all day. That's a fucking lie. <laughs> all of you know, college campuses are can be very, um, can be very confusing. Yay, kitty! Thanks for the boon. Well, let's check out our store over here. No, oh, don't care about the bus stop. Jardware is hardware, yeah. This layer looks exactly like the guy across from us. Public tools, help yourself. Uh. Uh, just. There's a. <laughs> There's a facial expression only a frost. You are absolutely fucking right. I've had that facial expression plenty of times. This must be the preparator since he's standing behind the counter and all. Hi, I'm Mars. Is this your store? That's right. I'm Bellamy Jardware, and welcome to Jardware's Hardware. Just wondering, did you open a hardware store just because of the rhyme? Yep, that was pretty much the entire reason. That's for sale. Ooh, you sell anarchist hardware. Infinite amount of it, too. That's nice. Uh, let's see. Work gloves. Ooh, those are pretty cool. Self adhesive rivets. So match. Okay. Nice. It's nice having a place like this in town. I know somewhere had a fuse that I needed to uh, replace. I think it might be the basement of. Um... Was it down? Was it here? This lady is making some ethereal music with spirit-filled glasses. God, the music in this game is so good. Okay, maybe it wasn't here. I can't remember where it was I needed fuses for. Oh wait, no, I remember now. It was the, uh, excuse you. Uh, it was the, um, the, it was uh, the tentacle house. Cause the basement was like dark or something. And I think we needed fuses. You notice a strange discolored patch of curb next to a sewer grate. The concrete appears to have absorbed a significant quantity of magical sewer energy. <laughs> Fucking sewer energy. Mmm, going ooze. Yep, this is the, this is the place. I think in the basement here is dark. Confused. Hooray, now it's slightly less dark. This is the dirtiest broom you've ever seen. 
world's dirtiest broom. You haven't actually seen them all, but you can't imagine a, wetter, a dirtier one than this. Oh god, what is this? Holy dang, what is that thing? A rat tentacle. Oh, sh that's a lot of, uh... Bird music. We'll do that and I'll reduce their muscle. So that's actually good. I'll reduce the damage that it does. The, the, just the random bird sounds is really funny for all the music. Like if you hear there's like crow noises with the music and I'm about to add sax to it too. Oh, our action points are gone because I haven't used the thing that gives us more per, uh, thing. Do I have a... I should have some, some, something I can use to hit all the enemies. I could have swore I had, like, some sort of grenade. Oh, yeah, we have an ice bomb. To do 10 damage to everything. So, let's, uh, just use that. Make this a little easier. Okay, and then... Plonk. And then we'll just blow it away with a rat-tat-tat. Like the good old days. You won. Those tentacles have wiggled their last waggle. And the giant mutant rat probably in a better place now. Oh. Alright. Ah, here's the problem. There's the... There's a hole in this bag of tentacle seeds. Some of them must have fallen on the old dirt floor and sprouted. You dispose of the bag and pick up the remaining handful of seeds. The company that sells these things has never done a satisfactory job of explaining why. This washing machine needs to be to be washed and repaired and completely replaced. Uh, let's fish in it. Naturally, that's the first thing you do is take go fishing. You catch some unple unpleasant trousers. <laughs> Mildew jeans. These jeans are twice as thick as regular jeans because of an extremely serious buildup of mildew. This much you need is to be washed and repaired and completely replaced. A shadow rift. Let's go. Go on in. Oh. Oh, I'm, I'm this big eyeball. What is going on? A piece of eye. Oh, we get to become a, a tentacle monster, apparently. Woo! My favorite looks just like me. It me for real. <laughs> Whoa! Space pants! <laughs> a throbbing ring of dark energy around a pair of dark shorts. You should ask Jessica about this next time you see her. Oh! I might have stumbled into something I wasn't meant to find yet. Well, that's fine. Let's, uh, let's wiggle our ass back to here. Let's get away from this place? Yes. Nice! Alright, well. And we could go back to Plunk Street and ask her directly. An elderly man with the thick sunglasses. Operator! Operator! Get my worthless son on the line! <coughs> Mister, I'm not a payphone. That's what the last payphone said! <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. Alright, Jessica. Looks pretty busy, but then again, but then she always does. Did you know that compasses used to be different? What? Different how? Like, North used to be called West or something? Oh, right. I remember... I kind of remember hearing that about that. It was only about three years old when it happened, though. It seems really disorienting. Eh. Pe people getting used to just about anything. Nobody complains about any complains anymore about how they stopped putting lard and chewing gum, for instance. I guess so. I got attacked by some weird shadow monster. Hmm. 
Like a sort of crazy abstract nightmare thing? Yeah, you seen them? Nope, never. Murray did though. He described them to me once. Did he have some kind of ultra scientific name for them? Yeah, weird shadow monsters. There's anything I can do about them? Well, here, take this ring. Murray gave it to me and said I could use it to banish them if I ever got attacked by one. But I have never, so you might as well take it. This cheap hunk of costume jewelry will probably turn your finger green, but it also banishes shadow monsters, so it's probably worth it. Maybe they're allergic to zinc. <laughs> Ah, oh, shut up. Oh, it's, it's called a regular house now because there's no more tentacles. This is a muggery. V insist on that you, that, that you to us all of your meat give. What? All of it? That's crazy. I guess it is a little extreme. Say V instead. Ten meat? No. It's mine. Don't worry. Don T has your back. Oh, hey. Rain a mobster. Hell, thanks. Tommy Spray. Come on, Tommy, get him! Oh, I guess you're a little slow. Eh, it probably doesn't. Plonk. Turk grows stronger. Well, not Zimmer's house. We don't need to go here. It was, uh, regular. It was formerly the Cynical House. Okay, we don't have mysticality for that. Although we probably can get that now. I think that also just gives us spooky armor for free too, so that's even better. All right, well, let's see if we can go back down in this place then. Huh. Well, maybe I'm not meant to find this yet. Because there wasn't an option to talk about the pants. Or maybe I needed to do that first and then I talk to her again. I don't know. Oh, we can just banish them with the anti shadow ring. You, you concentrate all your mental energy into the ring and punch your fist towards the shadows, willing the vital essence of your very existence to banish these creatures of unbeing. Boom! You have no idea if any of that was necessary because you don't know how the ring works. It does work though. The orbs shriek wordlessly and evaporate into nothing or er, somethingness. So that's cool. Alright, that works, I guess. <laughs> Alright, so I guess we can't do anything with those pants yet. Let's go to the fridge factory because I think there's a uh, potion crafting thing there I can use. Hey, whoa, they're out the w A man on the street does a big theatrical double take as he passed. Just wanted to get an just wanted to get another look at you. Hey, whoa now, how's the weather up there? Up where? You're taller than me. Up on the property ladder. I, I can't almost can't see you up there. Huh? I live in the back room of an, anti an antique store. Gee whiz, well I hope to join you in the antique storeroom of my own soon enough, but a fellow like me's got to sell, 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 if he wants to get on the property ladder. Luckily product I got I got nearly sold stuff. What is it? A paperclip. <laughs> Bam! That's a paperclip. Is it ever? I don't know if I need a paperclip right now. Guess your documents keep themselves from flying off in the wind. Guess your nose secures itself against wild odors. Alright, I'll buy one. Oh wee, do I detect the change of humidity? I must be chasing you up the property ladder. You didn't tell me the weather was this nice. <laughs> oh, the ride in this game is delightful. Yeah, it's that. Uh, two counts as a fleet. They have a whole fleet of these things. I need cold armor equipped, which I think we have some somewhere. There we go. Perfect. A pool of chemicals. Let's go fishing in a pool of chemicals. Carefully fish the useful chemicals out from the middle of the dangerous ones. There are weird flies buzzing around this barrel of frigid industrial waste. 
There's a pretty there's a pretty flower growing out of this patch of frosty industrial waste. It's probably a metaphor for something you don't understand. Nothing of value in there. Oh, this is a workbench for making combine items, not what I was thinking. This booze looks dangerous and also appears to be tainted with some sinister energy. Okay, well, I guess we can't do anything. I was thinking, must have been thinking the wrong place. I must have been thinking somewhere else to have the uh, chemical crafting station. Maybe the hobo camp has one? Oh, we get uh, some frosty flakes. Mmm. <laughs> I just realized it's floating around makes the spooky, like, alien noises. It's Doc, the hobo you rescued from Beppo's Hole. Oh, hello. Thanks for pointing me here. It's really great. It's been great. Nice. Yeah, I bet everyone's real glad to have a doctor around. Yep. Although we got a pretty robust lot here, so there hasn't been anything really interesting for me to do yet. But you know what they say. Every unremoved appendix is a basically a ticking time bomb. He rubs his hands together in excited anticipation. <laughs> Can he spare some first aid supplies? Sure, here you go. Use them in good health. No, wait. That would be wasteful. Wait until you're in bad health. <laughs> it's... Diptic pencil and a rhino balm. It's a, it's a muscle rub made from the toe jam of an endangered rhinoceri. Thanks, Doc. Veronica smiles and nods at you. It's Johnny the Hobo King. Ah, uh, Mari, you, you get around a lot, right? I In what sense exactly? You go to a lot of places. Oh, yes. Do you think you might be in the vicinity of the Seaside Institute of Technology anytime soon? I have a small delivery and need, need someone to make. Sure, I can do that. I received word that a hobo out there has come into possession of a number of old dorm room beds, and we could certainly make use of them. Could you locate the man and give him, him this invitation? <laughs> Royal summons. Sure, I'll keep an eye out. Can you teach me some hobo code? Ah, yes. According to the hobo code... Code... Co hobo hobo code code... I am, of course, obliged to obsess, but first, let me test you. Convince me of your worthiness, and I will grant you a boon. You know, to be honest, it doesn't matter. I already know all the hobo code. In fact, I should be testing you. Oh, really? Okay, hotshot, go ahead. What's well, a symbol for a public bathroom? Oh, that's symbol. It's a, hey, you won't scam me that easily. You're trying to get me to tell you it's a rectangle with a crescent moon on, in it. So you can pretend you knew all along. Well, shucks, you got me. I guess you better ask me instead. Huh, so what is the symbol for a public bathroom, then? Hmm, I think it's a rectangle with a crescent moon. Huh, well, you got, the, got it right, so I guess you earn a boon. Great. King Johnny hands out a small notebook, writes a glyph on it, and hands you the page. What's this? This is this is the hobo code symbol for boon. One of my favorite jokes. I wish I got to use it more often. Thanks. Alright, cool. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Spooky noises are making me happy. It's Beanie from the junkyard, happily cooking up a pot of beans. Oh, hey there! Good to see ya! Alright, bye. <laughs> well, I guess the I guess here is fun and all, but it doesn't exactly have what we need. <laughs> Sit campus pork cam. Hmm. This is an arcane oven. Um. Trying to remember where there is a uh, potion crafting. Off the side of the dirt road, you see a little trail of mushrooms. You follow it for a while, and you find that it leads to a cave whose mouth has been choked by mushrooms. 
Those things are bad for you. Well, let's go there instead, because mushrooms. Oh. Ah. This big writhing mass of fungus must be the reason they call this place Mushroom Mountain. Well, then I guess it would make sense. <laughs> you reduced the amount of fungus in the mountain by a small amount. There's still a lot of fungus remaining. Fragrant spores. A mushroom cap. Turret grows stronger. Plus one to all stat. Ooh. So now turret heals three. <laughs> Big old goofy mushroom. I'm guessing if we fight all the mushrooms that are here. Uh, oh, that's kind of cursed. <laughs> no, go away. Go away, you human faced mushroom. <laughs> Plunk. Mushroom steak. This is not really a steak, but a steak-sized slab of mushroom stem. Steak is just easier to say than all that. <laughs> Touch grows stronger. Like the story of its acquisition, the spear is long and painful, and nobody at the coffee shop is interested in it. Oh, I guess we can just end the fight. Alright. <laughs> Is this just like an endless fight thing I can do, or...? Hmm. Alright, which one of you is more dangerous? Well, you're gonna... Oh. Um... Alright, <laughs> Is it a good pie? No depositing. Oh, it's gonna deposit. It's like, oh, I don't like that. Oh, it's a little dude. Kill the child. Well, this is either just an, an infinite amount of fungus. That we could just fight forever, or there's actually gonna be a limit to it. God, put it out of its misery. It looks like it's in pain. Just go away. <laughs> Poisonous spew. Rude. Don't worry, Turk can just heal that right up. It tends to crash into Martina. Okay, you're, you're not worth my time. You leave Turt out of this, you fuck. <laughs> Shroom stab!
The little small shrimp is cute, yeah, it's just a little friend. <laughs> well, it's a little dead. I guess this is a good place to grind. I don't know if I really need to grind. I was thinking that we'd kill so many mu a certain amount of mushrooms and then we'd just like, like, perish. Like, we'd be able to go inside or something. But, maybe not. How you holding up, Molly? Sure, sure, sugar. Everything's just ducky. <clears throat> Let's wander a bit. Maybe there's some other places. Dodge out of the way of the spider. There's a lot of just spiders in this area. A lot of easy XP too. Just wander around and pass a skill check. And just... Greta's Compassionate Pet Store. It got you a whiff of dog food. Well, let's go, I guess. It's one of those boxes full of bees, a bee box if you think it's called. Meet your new best friend today. Oh god, this is a hippie, a hippie place. Good fronds are hard to find. Better leave this alone. <laughs> this radio is tuned to a wound, wind chime station. <laughs> Hello there, welcome to Greta's Compassionate Pet Store. I'm Greta. Hi Greta, I'm Mark. Can I ask you a question? Of course. Where are all the pets? Oh, they're all back. In cages? No, in the woods. I see. What stops them from leaving? Compassion! <laughs> okay, what pets do you have for sale? Well, I've got this snake available for adoption. I also got one giant mosquito left in stock. A giant mosquito? Ugh. Hey now, don't knock it. A mosquito is great to have on your side in the fight. Not only can they suck the blood out of stuff, but they can also pump the blood into you to heal you. Mathematically speaking, that's twice the power. Huh. I just need to give it a name. Buzz is a pretty good name for a mosquito. Um. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with Buzz. Buzz the mosquito. Bites enemies for physical damage and then heals you. Given this thing's size, you're glad it's friendly. <laughs> Thanks, Greta. Well, tell me more about this snake. Oh, you can't go wrong with the world's most dangerous rope. <laughs> this guy will totally fill your enemies up with poison. Now you just give me your venomous friend a name. Hmm. Slithery D. <laughs> That's an amazing name. <laughs> Slithery D the snake. Out of all the snakes you own, this is the only one. <laughs> What do you feed these? Oh, you don't have to worry about regular food. They'll graze or scavenge for whatever. They're very resourceful. Well, that's certainly convenient. If you want to soup them up a bit, though, make them really beefy. I'll, I, I sell some specially formulated familiar chow. I'm a little uncomfortable with the words of, like, soup and beef in a pet store, but okay. Familiar chow. One bag of familiar chow. Coming right up. More like going right down your familiar's gullet. Ha ha ha. Oh, that's actually really really good for buffing up some pets. Unfortunately, I'm all totally on pets. I guess that's fortunate for the pets, though. Say, before you leave, would you like a complimentary copy of the book I wrote? Sure, why not? Greta's, Greta's Guide of Cross-Species Friendship. A Vanity Press Manifesto about Animal Kindness. Cause your familiar to act two additional times. Oh, that's cool. That might actually be useful in, a, in certain situations. The book is a is a is a pretty is pretty woo woo, but you have to admit that it creates warm feelings in your heart towards your familiars. Now it's time to exploit that warmth and kindness. <laughs> Cause your familiar to act two additional times. There's an appendix in the back filled with trust exercises, but you're not sure you got the energy for that right now. If you do, a callback will cause your familiar to act an additional time. For now, we got that. We got Slithery D. There's poison. Our buzz here looks like they, um... We got Arlington the Canary. Who's, uh, if you level up more, it'll probably be more useful. 
But turret's pretty... Turret's plenty useful. 18 HP can heal a party member for 3 HP. Just for free. Can't complain. God, this place is bothering me. There's probably some way to, like, befriend this cat, but I don't really know. Alright, let's wander. See if we can find some more places. The future version of yourself strolls up to you and hands you a fat wad of meat. You know it's the future version, not the past, because you don't remember this happening before. Here, take this meat. Technically, I guess I should be repaying it to the future meat, but that's me now, so I, so you have to do it. What? But what's the point of giving me meat if I have to give it back to me later? You'll be making meat much more easily later, so it won't seem like as much then. Just think of it as a no-interest loan. On the contrary, I am actually interested. They roll your eyes at you. Sheesh, future you was a jerk. Haha, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, don't forget to pay you back or the universe will probably explode or something. Alright, cool. <laughs> The shadows are all just literally also spiders. Towards the shadow spiders and annihilate them all with a hot blast of cosmic brilliance. Whatever this ring is doing, it must be just it must just be a small flashlight for all you know. <laughs> Three figures approach you, their faces obscured by the shadows of the trees. Wow, wow ooh, uh, excuse me, what? Who are you? As they stop in the light, you see they have human bodies, but their heads are hideously misshapen fungal growths. Holy crap on toast, is right. Oh no, it's these guys! Well, one of them is gonna perish immediately. Send, send this. What are you preparing? Oh no, you're, you're not gonna. He's preparing, but that's okay, because we can just blow the blow them to smithereens. <laughs> pew 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 pew. Oh boy, you won! Hopefully these guys weren't a diplomatic envoy or anything like that. Wow! Ooh. <laughs> a squirrel chatters angrily at you from a nearby hollow tree. Trying to scare away from its stash. Maybe you should get out of here before it comes back with a knife. <laughs> <laughs> Just murder squirrel. Solve the maze. All these like prompts for like Moxie or whatever are just like easy XP. Like just easy fast XP. From just wandering around. No way, the only thing you like to get out of that old rust hole would be tetanus. Completely rusted and partially sunk into the ground. Old pre-war soda cooler. Although someone fitted a meat operated lock under the door at some point. Do the rust, you can't tell what brand it is. Heck, you can't even tell if there's any sodas in it. A rusty cola can. Ooh. You force some meat into the slot and grind the crank around until the door grudging, grudgingly unlocks. And suddenly you find a raccoon skeleton in one extremely old can of soda. It's a nice combat item. 15 damage. You see your past self c coming up the road towards you, and remember that 300 meat you owe. Maybe you ought to pay that back so the paradox doesn't destroy, destroy causality or something. Strap to yourself and hand them 300 meat. As you expected, they're a bit puzzled by this. Here, take this meat. Technically, I guess they should be repaying it to the future me, but that's me now, so you have to do it. What's the point of giving me? You'll be raking money more easily later. <laughs> It's literally just a role reversal of instead of us getting the meat, we gave the meat. Same. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Scare them silly. Yes, all the boys are crying now. In their natural state, crying. Oh, well, um, begone. <laughs> this place is really good for just grinding XP. Oh, I don't have enough of mysticality for that. Uh, yeah, wow, we got a lot of XP, just...
Sweet, yeah, like, pretty soon we're gonna be getting real strong. I wonder if the distillery had a place to make uh, potions. It seems like the place that would be for that. Find a decaying nightstand, discarded in a ditch, which is kind of a weird place to find a nightstand. Maybe someone got so mad at stubbing their toes all the time that they angrily drove it out in the woods and threw it out of the car. Oh, hey, right, paperclip. <laughs> ah, this is where I saw one, so let's make some. Some basic potions? I could have sworn there was a potion that, um, that gave me, uh, more AP. Face thickener. <laughs> that's funny, I like that. That's just, that's silly. Double ice. Frosty flakes. Non-Newtonian lotion. <laughs> well, I don't think I really need to make any of those. Eh, alright, well, in that case, uh... Oh, they wanted us to go shake, the Bob wanted us to go shake down the hardware store. I guess we can go do that while we're here. Uh, thanks for the meat, Squirrel. Shouldn't have said anything. Propose a shaking. I've been asked to shake up some of your merchandise. Come again? There's some mob guys who want to, want to intimidate you for some reason. So they sent me here to shake things up. We're down? Something like that. Huh. Well, those cans of paint over there could use a good shaking. I ain't got, got around to it for a while. Okay, sounds good. Can't say I'm particularly intimidated, though. <laughs> um, this one? These? Paints in all of the seasons trendiest patent of color. Shake them up. Y you give all the paint cans a vigorous shaking. <laughs> Well, we... Okay, those, those are different. I was like, oh, are those different than the ones I already have? Your pants are already riveted. Too many rivets and it's gonna start to see seem like a style choice rather than a practical one. Ah, uh, yeah. Trash soaked pants. Ooh. Wearing these pants makes you wish you could afford better pants. <laughs> Mildew jeans already got physical armor. We could add more to that. Technically, these overalls, these mildew jeans are actually better than the overalls without having buffs to them. So we'll equip those and we'll apply the rivets. I should give those two armor, I believe. Yep, two armor. Um, spray, spray on asbestos. Mmm. So now we've got um, fireproof riveted mildew jeans. <laughs> That's silly. An Eldritch Comfy Welding Mask. Hmm. Okay, well, that's fine. Well, I guess we technically shook down the, uh, the hardware store. Oh, hey, I guess we, we did it. Fresh beef fish sits atop the nightstand, along with a fresh note. Congratu congratulations on your successful shakedown. You'll be contacted with another quest in due timeliness. Nice. You open the case. Now that's a lot of gabagool. Kind 
condemned. <laughs> Hi, Dan. Hi, right back at you, baby. What's new? Here's your cut of the profits, baby. Found this case of vodka. Gotta be careful with this stuff. I might end up drinking you. Found this case of gin. This is generate some more business for sure. Order a drink. More HP. Gin's mysticality. Uh, I guess we'll do beer. Let's have a nice beer. Bottoms up. Give us more HP. Cool. Gonna have a different drink as well. Like, does that let me have both? Uh, don't, doesn't look like it. Post Uno Bliss. You had some wine and you're feeling fine. I'm about to just look up real quick what, um... Trying to see if I can figure out which, um... Trying to figure out, like, how to craft, uh, things. Let's see. Well, that article is basically useless. Didn't give me like any, uh, like it didn't give me any sort of, uh, info what I was trying to figure out, you know? Eh, whatever. Um, can I go in here now? This sneaky Pete's a tricky customer, but you never met him. Pete, you can't out sneak. If, if turning the key into lock does nothing, then what happens when you put it in and just leave it? Ah, yes, exactly. Lock clicks open. Good old sneaky Pete. Oh, we have to do this to. We have to unlock all of these. So if I can find, if I, if I have a hat or something that gives me muscle, I don't think I do. No. Now if I get like six more XP, I would be able to do that. Alright, well, let's wander a little bit, get some XP. There we go. Thick calluses. You can play all day without making your fingers bleed, especially if you're good at playing an instrument that doesn't use them. Or muscle and some maximum HP. Nice. A wooga to you, too. <laughs> My wooga. With this choker. Let's go down and let us open this door. Takes everything you've got, but finally the sturdy keyhole of, of Phylax falls to you in this contest of raw strength. The cast iron head gives you a nod. Respect between gladiators. <laughs> so now I need eight mysticality to open this door. Which we are, as you can see, nowhere near close to having. 
Or do I have at least- I do have a hat that'll give me mysticality, so that'd be four. And I think I have something here that would also give us the mysticality, so that'd be five. I think I have some pants that do too. Six. Hmm. Those don't give bonuses. So I probably need to get like two more, um, two more points, two more points in mysticality before I can like try to unlock this. So I might need to level up a bit more. Let's see. Cause I can get another one here with 150 XP. Let's let's continue. We'll come back to this later. Let's go. Let's go to the new place. See what that's about. Chapter three. Back to school. Ah, oh, shit. Sea Seaside Institute of Technology. It's probably best not to wander aimlessly on the outside of the campus. You ought to go and find that cursed book. The finite hallway. Eh, you've seen finite hallways before. You really wanna go back down that one? Huh, that's more finite than you expected. This hallway is so short and unremarkable that you've passed right through it the first time without even noticing. Poster in this border from years ago. Okay. <laughs> Theoretical topology lab number one. I'm going to happen next month. This seems unsafe. Our founder, Junius Fitzgerald Technology. <laughs> the nozzle of this ch uh, drinking fountain is plugged up with chewing gum. What in the hell is this? A dangerous looking kinetic sculpture. This guy must be the janitor, presumably. Hi there, are you the janitor? Hey, yep, that's me. Been the janitor in this place for nigh on 60 years. Got any questions? I figure I know about all there is to know about this, these, these buildings. Wow, everything? Well, everything janitorial at any rate. I do have a question, in fact. Yeah, what can I do for you, kiddo? Yes, the I about to find that hallway. That there's a good hallway. It goes on for a little while, then it stops. Real traditional, easy to clean, love it. <laughs> what about the main lobby? You mean this lobby right here? The one I almost finished mopping before you came in without wiping your feet? Uh, sorry. Nah, just yanking ya. Ain't a difference to me which floor I'm mopping. About the infinite hallway. They say I couldn't start mopping down there until we finished painting it, which suits me since they, they ain't never gonna finish painting it, no matter how much clever math tricks they come up with. Super tasks my foot. The infant hallway. Low energy chemistry lab. Professor Laurel Brent. Split physics lab. Professor Vincent Talbot. As much as you're tempted to continue on and explore the infinite, it seems like it might be a bad idea right now since you don't have a map of this place. <laughs> the water pressure here is one divided by infinity. <laughs> well, that sucks. What's this? I guess steam doesn't really work in an infinitely long duct. Let's go to the gift shop. A rack of sturdy, of sturdy branded kitchen britches. It's a weird little pocket of nothingness, just sort of hovering here. Maybe you should ask Jessica about it. This is the most coffee cups you've ever seen in one place. Not, not so long ago, shorts, shorts this short would have caused a nationwide scandal. Replica sit ring. This is indistinguishable from an actual sit class ring unless you look very closely at the card badgers, whereupon you'll see they are not themselves wearing class rings. Extra ice peaks from fights. Ooh, that's actually good. I'll buy one of those. A souvenir mug from the Seaside Institute of Technology. Has the school motto on it. Summus Valde Captisus. Captiosus. Sit jazz slacks. Ooh. Finally some pants that give me uh, <laughs> the, the sports shorts. <laughs> Hang on your wall! 
This pen, this pen either proclaims that you want to sit, or very loudly commands your guests to sit down. I will buy these, some jazz slacks. Flexible and low friction to facilitate all your shimmying and lindy hopping and whatnot. Alright, cool. Uh, admissions department? These plants grew from the seeds of knowledge. Hato is free! These fronds look very educated. Shelves of file boxes. Probably student records as the 8 track tape hasn't been invented yet. A little plaque under pho photo says Lucian P. Wormwood, Dean of Students. Shelves of file boxes. Probably student records. It's either the admissions clerk or someone the, someone the admissions clerk pays to keep their seat warm. Hello, how can I help you? Well, uh, I guess maybe I'm interested in furthering my education despite having kind of an urgent task on my hands. Ah, well, you'll be interested in the accelerated course then. Our usual undergraduate degree is a four year program, but the accelerated course takes only three, three years, so kind of more than I was hoping. Three hours. Three hours. Okay, great. How much will it cost? Are you from this area? Yeah. Who keeps the originally, but I'm living in Ocean City. Well, you're in luck. Well, with the accelerated course being discounted, plus a further discount for local education incentives, plus a further discount for the fact that we're in the middle of a break and the facilities would otherwise be idle, tuition will be 100 meat. Wow, that sounds really reasonable. We also have some leftover grant money for low-income students this year. If you need assistance, the grant total would come to free. I will totally take you up on that. Great, sign up, sign here, and we'll get you all set up. What would you like to take care of your major? Hmm, that's a big decision. Well, since we're on break and a lot of teachers are out for town, I'm mean, not that big. Three options are available are botany, robotectronics, or chemicals. I'll go with chemicals, I guess. Next, choose a minor, which could be geology. Meta acoustics or astronomy? I like geology in real life. I finally get one elective spiders, culinary science, or phys ed. Spiders? <laughs> hmm, spider sounds like a totally normal choice. I'll go with that. Rocks are great. Here's your transcript street. In order to graduate, you need to go to each year three instructors to sign that if you pass their class. Okay, where do I get started? Here's a map to help you get around campus. Scale our wing. And here's your student ID. Don't lose that. It's how Athena identifies you. Apparently, a pattern mentions something to means something to Athena. What the fuck? Is, who's Athena? Athena is our campus security. It's an acronym for Ask the N the New Electric Doorway <laughs> Security System for Access. Never let the guy who builds a thing pick the name. Anyway, welcome to Seaside Institute of Technology. Just in time too. My lunch break starts right now. Alright, bye! <laughs> it's. Oh, yeah, it's Molly. Oh! What is this? This sculpture is called Zero Man. It's also what, what you rate it on a scale of 1 to 10, man. <laughs> Rocks are great. This, this must be Sigma get something. Probably bats. <laughs> Library! Oh! You see, you see, uh, um... Hello, dear, are you new here? Uh, yes, yes, I'm R. My name's Janet. Please don't be alarmed by my visible mechanical insides. I'm in no pain. Well, that's good, but isn't the, uh, immobility an issue? Oh, I'm perfectly mobile. I have wheels, and the robot techno Tektronics department has provided me with some very nice telescoping arms. I'm just sitting down right now, because with the majority of students on break, I don't have any books to need shelving. Oh, okay then. Anything can help you with, dear. I'm looking for a certain book. Would you say it's an important rare one, or an easily replaceable one? Oh, the former, definitely. You'll want to ask Doug's about that then. He keeps track of all the books that we actually care about. Anything about chemicals? Those are just the ones con concerned with digestion, but I have been, I have been, I have been, but I have been to visit the chemicals department before. You notice the bronze statue in the foyer? Uh, it's a life-size statue of Dr. Adams, the founder of the department. Not just life-size, but incredibly lifelike as well. 
Whoever sculpted it should have knew a thing or two about bronze. Know anything about geology? Oh, I don't know a lot about the details, but Dr. Morton gave me a tour of the Hex Rock Quarry. Simply fascinating. Have you seen it yet? I haven't been to the classroom yet. Oh, you're in for an exciting time. Know anything about spiders? Oh, no, no. I can't tell you anything about spiders. Horrible things. That's Douglas. Not a fan? They get all up inside my gears and ugh, awful. <laughs> Alright, thanks. Look up Jones. Herbert Jones, professor of sideways biology from 1861 to 1882. Resigned after an internal investigation revealed that there's no such academic discipline. <laughs> so he was a professor of sideways biology for like 18 years and then they found out that doesn't exist and he had to, he resigned. An elderly gentleman greets you with a politely inquiring smile. Hello there. Are you a student of the ID? Student? Yep, here's my student ID. Yes, that looks like this looks to be in order. Very well then. My name is Douglas. What can I do for you? Why does that man have an eyeball for a head? It's quite a sight, isn't he? Please don't be alarmed. I'm more confused to be honest. Ted and I and our colleague Janet over there, and am I right? Share a, shall we say, unusual past. What happened? We worked in a circus sideshow together. That was more than 30 years ago. Oh, th these people are from the sideshow! Okay. I figured that she looked familiar, and the eyeball guy f seemed familiar. You don't seem like sideshow material. Perhaps not, but regard. He stands up and turns to face the wall, but he's still looking right at you. His entire back is identical to his front, with another face in the back of his head, and all of his clothes tailored to match. What? <laughs> Please excuse me, I do always enjoy the reactions of new students. He sits back down to a chorus of cracks and pops as his joints reverse to new positions. Holy jeez. <laughs> Oh, don't worry, it's, it sounds much worse than it feels. A regimen of stretching exercises keeps me fit as a fiddle. Anyway, after the three of us escaped the circus, we headed east. The institute took us in, out of scientific curiosity, and gave us work as librarians. How did you escape? Ah, well, it's not a story that really bears recounting. Besides, the three of us prefer to look ahead, not back. Even myself, haha. <laughs> Is there anything I can help you with? Yes. I'm looking for a certain book. But, uh, that's gonna sound dumb. I've been doing the job for years, I assure you, whatever it is, I've heard dumber. Well, I don't know the title of, of the book, but what it's about. All I know is that it's, it's a hardcover, and it's and about so big, and probably an antique. Well, something about the, about the of that size and age will be in our stacks. All the books out for me. All the books out front here are the ones that won't be worn if an undergrad doodles in the margins uses a slice of bologna as a bookmark. Hmm, okay. Is there anything else I can help you with? I need help with one of my classes. Know anything about chemicals? Hmm. Not much more than the next fellow. Try asking Janet. She's the more scientific minded of us. Anything about geology? Study of rocks? Right. That was all I know. Janet might be able to tell you more. Know anything about spiders? I've read a book or two on the topic. One thing I've noticed is that they aren't exactly subtle creatures. For many of them, their name is a dead giveaway to their abilities. The Arctic ankle binding spider is quite resistant to cold, for example, and uses cold based attacks. While the Chthonian magma spider breathes fire, so you would do well to be able to resist and douse flames when fighting one. For the ones not so transparently named, well, all you have to do is fight them and see what they do. Then you can be prepared for that next time. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's the thing she knows, huh? Hello, Ted. Are you able to talk? A tall, wiry man with a single giant eyeball for a head glares at you as you approach. Uh, hello? Douglas goes over. I'm afraid the stacks are off limits to graduates. If I could do an alumni only, so I have to pass all my courses first. Exactly. Once you have all three signatures on your course transcript, Ted will verify them and let you through. And I should warn you, not that I think you'd attempt to cheat or anything, but Ted is very good at spotting forgeries and has a ton of pent-up anger and frustrations. Ted clutches and unclutches his fist while watching you carefully. Okay then. Yeah, so we probably have to pass all of our classes before we can uh, get the cursed book. Theoretical. 
Wait, what? Spider wing. It's a weird shadow pocket or something. I can't stress enough that you shouldn't do this. It might give you some kind of shadow disease, or maybe just bite your hand clean off or anything. All right, it's your hand or hand. It's your head or hand, whatever. You stick your hand in the hole, grab the first thing your fingers brush against, and you yank it back out. You got an item, Shadow Hot Dog. <laughs> the shadow, the shadow puck advantages an otherworldly pop. A sausage-shaped hole in reality. It has been replaced into a regular hot dog bun for your convenience. Mmm. Oh, the spider. Well, test door disregard. Spiders. We got a loose steam vent. All right. <laughs> Roof access. This Athena terminal has some of its important parts replaced by a pineapple. Authorization verified. Access granted. You walk into the classroom and find a bunch of undergrads seating at the desks, fidgeting impatiently. Jeez, finally. Ah, oh, but we could have, we could have left if they had been another six hours late. Uh, aren't, aren't all you kids supposed to be on break? Oh, we would be, yeah, except we've been waiting for you to get here and start class. You go into your transcript, and sure enough, you signed up to teach this class, not take it. Whoops. Well, I guess we're gonna teach them about spiders. Applied spiders? <laughs> this console is labeled Experiment Controls. That's with it. There's a sign on, on it that says, Out of order due to lack of spider food. Hmm. Okay, you got me. It, it isn't completely bare. Someone left a note. I owe you one bag spider chow. Jerry. Hmm. Help us one of the student dorms. Hang your drag on in extra dirt from outside for that cute little robot to clean up. It's working so hard. Wait, why does it have a title label that says killing room floor? Oh, oh. Let's not. <laughs> a shelf full of identical textbooks. Advanced poison chemistry. There's a little skull and crossbones on the spine, so that's either a book about pirates or poison. <laughs> well, let's look, let's read. All right. Well, we don't. We're, that's we don't have mysticality, so that's not really useful to us. Well, I suppose we should probably go get Spider Chow from Hilbert House. While exploring the halls of SIT, you take a wrong turn and find yourself in a locker room full of goblins. As best as you can figure it out from context, they must be Sit Var Sit's Varsity Snapping Towels at Butts team. <laughs> Except the sport probably has a better name for that. Towel Butt? Butt Snap? <laughs> hey, what's your sport called? Foot Base! Well, that doesn't make any sense at all. What are you, a nerd or some of some or another kind? The goblins twist their towels up in lethal looking whips. We're gonna fight some freaking punk ass goblins. Jocklin. <laughs> Jocklin, sorry. Yeah, that, they're gonna hurl a real scorcher at Molly. <laughs> you won. Unfortunately, it isn't the final, so there's no trophy. A baseball. The smell of fresh cut grass, the bellowing of the peanut seller, and the crack of this ball against the skull of your, of your rival. Okay. An, an SIT sports drink. Okay, and a Jocelyn baseball cap. Ooh, that's actually pretty good. More ranged weapon damage. The burn of this cap will keep the sun out of your eyes, which will in turn help you with your bullying. <laughs> Hell yeah. Ton of bully people. What do we 
have here? Oh, those are uh, electrically powered street lights. Okay. Let's see. There's a book in this desk, but all the pages are blank. The books on the shelves are actually just in empty boxes decorated to look like tomes. Ah, right, there's that bag of spiders food jury swiped. Well, turnabout is fair play. We got spider kibble. Oh, there's fish people. Oh, looks like some of those gross fishmen have claimed an empty room, and they don't seem very welcoming. damage now. It's pretty good. Well, that was a lot. This horrible dorm room is safe for safe for disgusting undergrads once again. Delicious oyster. Mmm. Sports letter. By wearing this, you can pretend to have gotten some sort of sports accolade. Turk grows stronger. Nice. Uh, what we got? Box. Uh, a chewed up. Ah, uh, maybe there wasn't just maybe there just wasn't anything in here. Just some sort of fish people. Skim dealer. <laughs> we can hang, we can steal their poster and put it in our room. There's a cup of coffee in this desk that's been left out so long it's been cooled to nearly absolute zero. The coffee warms slightly in your grasp, but not enough to make it good. <laughs> This is more like when people accidentally leave coffee sitting out in a public restroom for weeks. You find zero teeth and a non-zero amount of meat. Oh! Vampires! <laughs> it seems like these vampires probably aren't legitimate students. Whatever gave me that idea. Oh, that's not pleasant. <laughs> Got him. You won. This horrible dorm room is safe for disgusting undergrads once more. Disposable razor blade. Ooh. Adds bleed to a weapon. Scientists at SIT have achieved humanity's wildest dream. A razor blade that you can throw away. <laughs> Poyo Diavola. During the Cola Wars, there were posters all over the place warning our, our servicemen of the dangers of the devil's chicken. <laughs> it's fucking stupid. <laughs> The devil's chicken. Oh, that's how we get up here. Okay. I was like, wait, what's this hole? More vampires.
Wow. Hello, Rice Muck. Welcome. We are playing Shadows of Loathing, which is a silly RPG game. Right now we're fighting some vampires. <laughs> About to throw a Glocklin mallet ball at this little vampire bat. And then we're gonna do some uh, sacks of violence, which adds sacks to the soundtrack and will just damage enemies to it. This is a great game. You made a great choice for your friend. It's a fun game. Oh, wait, I have just enough damage where we can just finish this vampire off. A pocket chemical hand warmer. Adds cold armor to a pair of pants. And we got the devil's chicken again. It's hor this horrible dorm is safe for disgusting undergrads once again. Uh, it's basically like a, an RPG set in the 1920s. With like flappers and like mo the mob. But there's also Cthulhu things going on. So it's 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 a there's just a bunch there's a lot going on and it's it's just kind of it's pretty it's a pretty funny funnily written game games beings hang shouldn't sink any time into fixing you can see the outline of a book under the blanket which is apparently made of depleted uranium what he grunted and struggled and finally managed to lift the blanket enough to grab the book ooh I'll take that. College kids sure do have interesting taste in art. That's my art now. <laughs> I just stole their, stole the poster out of this place. Oh my goodness. Five dollars. Thank you so much for the donation. Appreciate ya. I'm, I'm glad to see the thing works. Thank you so much for the five dollars. All right, sweet deal. Disposable razor, rolled up poster hanging in your room. Let's look at this. This book is full of all sorts of juicy diagrams of cannons and charts of cannon data and paragraphs, which, which though you haven't read them yet, you can safely assume are also about cannons. The diagrams are really advanced. You're gonna have to fire all your mental cannons at once if you want to figure this out. Figuratively speaking. Okay, we need more XP to learn that. That's fine. There's like a hat here. What we got in here? Cash blob. More posters. This student must have needed twice as much sleep as a regular person. This sink has been dripping for so long that a stalagmite has formed. Let's use psychogeology to harvest it. Mmm. A note on the top of this armadillo-shaped cabinet reads, You'll never find the secret compartment, tee hee hee. Prove it wrong. The, no the, the, the note writer's smarm is no match for yours. <laughs> you click the compartment and rate its contents. A binder clip, alright. What about this? Oh, we need more cold armor. Um... Do I have anything for cold armor in my, my pants here? We can add some cold armor to our uh, our our ri fireproof riveted mildew jeans. <laughs> I I am armored up. See, I think I'm pretty sure I have some cold armor somewhere in this too. Probably some. Okay, there's some. Uh, is that enough now? I do have enough cold armor now. 
There's a cup of coffee on this desk that's been left out so long it's cooled up. Near absolute zero. Old cold coffee. I think we're actually gonna drink one of these. How long have I been playing this for? Uh, this is the third stream of it, so probably like in total like 11 or 12 hours or so. I'd say. Actually, gonna, yeah, we're gonna drink one of these because it gives us some more uh, AP and gives us AP gen. We'll replace our red stained lips. One that we currently have. Cold discomfort. You, you're heavily caffeinated and you don't even have a warm belly to take it, take the edge off of it. Blech. Oh, more vampires. Perfect. Probably not legitimate students. <laughs> That's a feral vampire. Uh, well, let's uh, cl let's clobber this uh, bat here. All right, let's do sacks of violence. You're gonna hurt turt. Um, you shriek at Molly Buttons and you're gonna blast everyone with blood. I have one more AP. You can use that to finish off, uh, Bat. With Orchestra Strike. And then... Let's see, what, what we got? We got a binder clip, we got a <laughs> baseball. Styptic pencil. Stench armor. Poison sack. Nasty goo. <laughs> a fairy knife. Uh, glob of wet hair. <laughs> Jeez. A sleaze wad. Um. Yeah, we'll, we'll kill. We'll kill this uh, critter off instead. Cause, cause this guy will like lose a bunch of his HP. Now we can just probably just kill him. Go, Turt, do it! Yay! Alright, <laughs> drum roller skate lets you skate everywhere. Oh goodness, we gotta check that out, because the shoes in this game give you different walking things, like <laughs> We're like roller skating everywhere now. Uh, let's see. Uh, well, I'll go back to the vampire boots because they, they, they let us f float around like a little creepy dude. Uh, let's keep going upstairs in this dorm. We already got what we came here for, but there's just a lot of stuff to fight here and to do. So. Do I have enough XP now, actually, for this? Oh, almost. Probably another fight. Hmm. Lots of chemicals and equipment. Almost all, almost all of it ruined. You open the fridge and find it was storing stale air. Gross, just gross. This night scene has a telltale stench of arsenic about it. Oh good, there's nearly a whole jar of arsenic left in Blevins' nightstand. At least you assume this is Blevins' room, not some other chemical student who is super into arsenic for some reason. This is enough arsenic to kill every squirrel on the planet. Not that I'm saying that's a noble goal or everything. Oh no. Bitsy Pizza. Alright, that's mine. This sink is good in some kind of mildew, which is also very cold for some reason. 
Apparently, this bear army cot was too comfortable for the student's taste because they were also using a they were also using a rock for a pillow. Take a sample. It seems to absorb some of the student's ruggedness. This this is just a rock shaped like a mini fridge. <laughs> There's a, there's a first aid kit in this desk, but the watch is really complicated. Oh, we have some sit socks to be equipped temporarily for some more moxie to uh, get that. Alright, we got some Rhino Balm. <laughs> let's equip our... Uh, equip those again. Okay, cool. Got, I think we actually have enough stuff now to do that uh, book. One plus one of ranged weapon attacks. As you fit af after you finish, you hurl the book into a nearby trash can, perfectly predicting the arc of the tra travel. Swish. <laughs> so now we now our little derringer does one more damage. Shaft attacking. <laughs> All right, cool. Thanks. Uh, more of that. What we got? There's a cup of coffee on this that's been left out so long. Nice. All right. This fridge has been sealed shut by vines. Alright, cool. Oh, we got robots! Seems like a student set up an elaborate robot security system to guard his room while he's away. Alright. I'll fight him. It's 15, 16, or 14. Zapping over is gonna charge up its coils. You're gonna. Four, four, and five. We'll, we'll clobber this one. Bonk. It's charging its lasers. Okay, we'll do... Hmm. Probably overall more damage if we do it this way. Oh wow, that thing's tough. <laughs> it's getting boxed. Jazz hands. Uh, I think I'd like just enough HP not to like die. Well, I might as well hurt this one some more. You leave Turt alone. I like, you... yeah, I probably should kill this one. So yeah, we'll jazz hit, we'll, we'll orchestra strike this one, and we'll just kill this one off with our Derringer. Blow them away with a rat tat tat. <laughs> you won. This horrible dorm is safe again. Oh, another disposable razor blade. Nice. Anything in here worth anything? No. Alright, next floor. How many floors are in this dorm? Jeez. Oh, we got some goblins. Some jocklins are having a party in here. You weren't invited. Well, that's fine. I invited myself. Jocklin football player. Jocklin tackler. 14 damage. Hut hut. Hmm. 
Alright, so what are we gonna do about these? Probably this, like always, because it's just a lot of damage to every to all the enemies. Okay, we can probably finish you off. Uh, almost. Alright, we can use this to kind of soften it up enough to kill it with our orchestra strike. Might as well. Okay, and then you have 17. How much do I do? 18. Get fucked, buddy. <laughs> Clobber him. No, don't hurt Turt. Eh, it's whatever. Turt's fine. Tur Turtle, just walk it off. <laughs> An elaborate ring full of tiny cogs and sprockets and gears and such. This room is safe for disgusting undergrads once more. There's trash everywhere. <laughs> Fizz aces, we'll just take that. This nice skin looks really elegant. It's empty, which you suppose is also a certain kind of elegance. The pillow in this bed is slightly askew. Ooh, some meat. A mini fridge of Swiss manufacturer. Jeez, even the refrigerators won't pick a side. <laughs> oh god, jeez. Drink it for your country! It's the patriotic thing to drink! Get some more old, old coffee. Burn bikes, alright. Some more meat. Do I have a thing that gives me moxie? Oh, I have some glasses. And then I can put on these, uh, these jazz slacks. And now we can open this. An accessory that gives us three range weapon attacks. Nice. Alright, let's... Okay. Different fights. Hmm. Mood ring. Foots ring. Jagged ring. Hmm. Yeah, we. Oh. Let's put a let's put a, a disposal razor blade on our gun. You fix the disposal razor blade to your sharpened extra small derringer, which by the transitive property of disposability becomes disposable itself. Excellent. Disposable sharpened extra small derringer. <laughs> it just the name just keeps getting longer and longer. World's dirtiest broom. Let's see, make sure we're putting stuff back on that's actually useful for us, like, yeah. Like that. Okay. Yeah, we don't have Miscality to get the, into that. Let's see, hmm. A 
should probably clobber one of these ones that's uh got 20 HP to soften them up for oh shit god damn Uh, just barely not able to knock you out. Hmm. Well, we can throw we can throw us a, a surplus cola wars grenade. I guess we'll do that. <laughs> yeah, the music in this game is really good. I am quite a fan. I will or orchestra blast you, and then we should be able to just finish this one off with our gut with our gun. Oh goodness. Hey 3G's, thanks for the raid. 3G's and the Sailor Leaks are here. What were you up to? What were you doing? Hello, Gecko Duck. Thanks thank y'all for the raid. Thank Welcome, welcome. We are playing Shadows Over Loathing. Hello, hello everybody. Katamari Damashi, awesome. I've never actually played Katamari Damashi, but I've, I've heard of it and seen people do stuff. It sounds like it'd be fun. We are doing well. We are currently going through the do a dorm room just fighting things. Fighting Jocklins. Yeah, I could, I could see that. I could see Damashi being a game I would actually enjoy playing. Maybe somebody should play it. You won. This horrible dorm room was safe for disgusting undergrads once again. Got a baseball, got a Mobius cookie, and Turk grows stronger! Yay! So, so this game is Shadows Over Loathing. It is a, um, a silly RPG set in the 1920s with the mob and Prohibition and Flappers and has Cthulhu stuff. And it's very fun. Thank you so much for the follow, Gecko Duck. Appreciate ya, appreciate ya. Alright. How how many floors does this place have? It's like the fifth of. Oh, what do we have going on here? <laughs> Some Jocklins are having a party. You weren't invited. Well, let's invite ourselves. All right, so we've got a uh, Molly Buttons here is our our partner. She can either she use her Tommy gun to sp just spray bullets at random random enemies, or she can use uh, her cap knee, which is her. Uh, she'll kneecap someone. Uh. The cheerleader um, probably needs to die first because they're gonna they'll heal other people anyway. So yeah, we're gonna just we're gonna clobber them. Hut hut, hike, <laughs> fastball. No, not turt. Go turt, go. Good job. Alright, so we're, we're gonna just try to focus all of our damage probably on uh, this one first. We can use an item though to make things a little easier on ourselves. We got a, col a surplus Cola Wars grenade which does 10 damage, we'll throw one of those. We'll play the Sacks of, the sacks of Violence! Which actually adds sacks to the freaking... Uh, background music if there wasn't already some in there okay so we got one more AP left this turn we can't quite finish her off but she's gonna be the first one to die so we're gonna probably mm, we'll, pro we'll use orchestra strike on uh, this guy and then we'll use our derringer on the cheerleader Because we can do a lot of damage with the Derringer. Plonk! <laughs> 
Uh, actually, he'd probably die next turn, so we'll clobber him so that I make sure. Kalinicta73 has joined the Bean Army. Kalinicta, thank you so much for the follow. Alright, so we're gonna clobber. Go! Get him, Molly. Hut hut. <laughs> Go, Turk, go! Alright, so we got 2 AP. We're just gonna orchestra blast the shit out of this dude. To make sure we can take him out. Eh. Oh, I got him. Alright, cool. We got some more XP, some more random junk. A simple. It's taking all their posters, too. You can see the outline of a book under the blanket, which is apparently made of depleted uranium. Huh. Uh, is there any way we could get that high of muscle? Probably not. We might have to come back to this floor when we have higher stats. Taxes must. Alright. Some rock scrapings. Mmm, yummy. All the drawers have been removed. We can't get in there. It's not exactly the crazy west, we're kind of- we're actually in the east. <laughs> it seems like. Students set up an elaborate security system. Well, we came to this place to find a, um... Jesus, how high does this place go? There's more of those, let's not bother them, we don't really need to. Let's just kind of see what we're dealing with. Some weird hurdy-gurdy music is playing from this radio. This bed is a ghost? <laughs> a seam pizza. Oh, I take that poster. There's a fire ant farm in this desk. That seems pretty dangerous. That sounds like Cotton Eye Joe. Oh, more vampires. Let's, uh... At this point, I'm just kind of seeing what's... How high this place goes. Slice crank tats. This night scene is currently on fire. Alright. Thanks for the poster. Books are all painted on. <laughs> oh, what is... Oh great, some, some math major left his, his pet maths in here when he wanted to break and nobody's fed them. Huh. Oh, there's no <laughs> the fighting numbers. Prime Mover intends to set all combat and stats to random prime numbers. Oh, that sounds terrible. Yeah, yeah, they might want to worry about the fire. <laughs> Algebra Vortex is going to raise all of its ally stats and lower all your party stats by one. Well, you're kind of annoying. Uh, Congruence Cascade intends to attack Molly Buttons for 12 damage and then increase its own muscle by three. Oh, uh, well, I guess let's... Mm. This one seems the most obnoxious. Uh, well, I probably should have used the clobbers. Oh, Jesus Christ. I don't know what even happened, but there's a lot that went. I was thinking of happening, I guess. Alright, let's... I just destroyed- I just killed numbers. I'm killing numbers. Go, Turk, go! <laughs> now we can just kill- we can just shoot with a- shoot numbers with a gun! Oh, we got another disposable razor blade. Nice. What, what have we got? Oh, that's the- oh, that's the place- This place is- that's the one with the night scene that's on fire. Academic pressure, okay. More robots. They seem to be a lot of robots here. How high does this go? This is absurd. 
The comforter in this bed is printed with discomforting arcane glyphs. <laughs> Blend by it, sure. Dank herbs. The best kind of herbs. More math. I I'm starting to wonder if this, ha if this dorm is just literally, like, infinite. Prison valve. <laughs> what in the hell is this? A biochemistry experiment left disturbed. Okay, weed <laughs> weed slots. <laughs> okay, yeah, I have a feeling this just goes up for a while longer, with increasingly higher like. Um, skill checks. Stinky fridge. Fish people. Alright. <laughs> More vampires. Temp tests, alright. In the top drawer, a family of millipedes appears to have constructed a nest out of some chewed up adult magazines. I'll leave it to you to imagine what this lo that looks like. <laughs> the shelf of horror novels is overgrown with spooky shelf fungus. Pete Prof. Alright. Ooh, some meat under the pillow. Meat is the currency of this game. And universe. Let's see. Oh, more, va more vampires. Alright. Seriously, how high does this go up? More robots. Grab some, grab a rock. Can't do any of that. Symbol feast. That's a can of beans. Drawer is empty. This, this, this desk has collapsed under the weight of a steaming pile of rocks. Wonderful. I'm sure I am glad that those rocks are steaming. More uh, Jocklins. Holy hell. Twelve? If, again, it feels like this is just is arbitrarily high. An old timey piano song. Mouse mother. <laughs> Fish people. Wipe poop. <laughs> As you do. I wonder if this is like just like procedurally generated at some point. Biddy end struck. <laughs> Gotta get them biddies, I guess. A lot of these seem like really randomly thrown together. To the point where maybe they are. Social inch. <laughs> Unidentified chemicals. Mmm. Cool rocks, Eldrick Mitch. Eldritch Mist. Eldritch Mitch? <laughs> I don't know. Well punt. There's nothing in this fridge except the memories of beers long past. If there's if I go up there's one and there's more floors, yeah, we're just we're gonna come back to this maybe later. We gotta head back to the scalar wing. Out on the quad, you encounter two goblin cheerleaders who are cheering on a goblin wearing a baseball uniform. Despite the fact that the baseballer doesn't seem to be doing anything cheerworthy, they don't even know where he B A S E B A L L. What is the spell? They look at you expectantly. Baseball. Yes, hooray! We have, we have got it right this time. Let us now spell another. Good. Yes. What is the spell? Let's bamboozle the shit out of them. 
Flossanosanilipilification. <laughs> Wander off while they're distracted. Hey, it's me, Eldritch Mitch. <laughs> Hey guys, it's your boy, Eldritch Mitch. Spin five meat, huh? Looks like they forgot to unpack the cans before they loaded the machine up. We got a crate of crate of cola, huh? Let's go to the spider wing. Test door disregard. It's a it's a it's a door. Regard it. Or regarding the door, you're instructed to disregard it. Disregard it. <laughs> Fine. Meta acoustics. Okay, can't go to that class. We came to this uh, university to find a uh, cursed book, but we ended up accidentally enrolling in the, the school here. And so now we have to teach a class about spiders, I guess. Applied spiders, and we have to put some we have to put some spider food in the trough. I think. I don't order due to lack of spider food. We, I know we got some. Oh, here's the spider food. Let's put it in the spider chow. Tear open the bag and dump the spider chow in the tr in the trough. Initially, it doesn't seem like m very much food, but a hidden nozzle turns on and sprays the chow with water, causing it to swell up and make its own gravy. Disgusting. <laughs> Console at the front of the room makes a big bing noise. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks for the raid and thanks for the lark. I'll pro I'll be here at least for another hour or so. This console's experiment controls. The console consists of four knobs and a big button labeled Release Spiders. Oh boy, yes please. First knob is labeled Specimen Selection 1. Arctic Ankle Binding Spider. Intra Sylvania Piper Striped Sniper Spider. Daddy Nasty Legs. This Daddy Nasty Legs over here? Hmm. You look around across the rows of expectant students and clear your throat. Ahem, <clears throat> okay, uh, what's this class about? Spiders! Ah yes, of course. Well then, spiders. Spiders are super gross and scary. They have eight legs and lots of eyes. I think maybe eight eyes? How many buttholes do they have? Probably four, right? Eight legs, four buttholes. That's logical. <laughs> students nod and write this down in their notebooks. Any other questions so far? One student waves her hand in the air frantically. Oh, oh, pick me! Okay, sure, what is it? Did you ever fight an intra in, in Transylvanian vampire spider? Did I fight one? Oh, well, you don't expect us to respect you as a teacher if you don't have any hands-on experience, do you? I wasn't holding out much hope for it, regardless. Can I just read a book about them? A book? Oh, come on, you're all wet. Any of us could read a book ourselves. What are they paying you for? They aren't. We can't possibly take you seriously unless you personally killed the giant blood-sucking nightmare monstrosity you're supposed to hear, hear teach us about. Okay, so we do have to, we did have to actually go get that. We have to, like, fight a, uh, the Transyl the, in Transylvania one. Oh boy, yes please. In Transylvanian Vampire Spider. <laughs> you get... The last knob is, is labeled Safety Protocol. This is the first good news this console has given you. A syringe tipped armature emerges from a hidden panel on the machine and squirts some extra blood into you. Oh, yay! Extra HP, that's actually really good. Oh. out spiders if you, if you don't like spiders you can probably look away they're very vague spiders but they are in fact spiders don't worry there's not gonna be spiders on the screen for too long I promise they do make pretty unpleasant noises I will say
And you can learn a little about spiders in the process, quantified thusly. Excellent. Alright, well, let's teach him about the... You were going to tell us about fighting an Transylvanian vampire spider. Right, okay, well. The Transylvanian vampire spider is a huge, long jerk with a black carapace and little white spots. And its head is right on top, like it's wearing a swimmer's cap. And when it attacks, it stalks up to you with those big, long legs and then rears back and pounces on you, stabbing you with its horrible fangs and sucking out all your blood. Oh, does it hurt? Yes. And also, it heals the spider a whole lot, so you have to deal a bunch of damage to it at once to overcome that. Well, we need to know that for the final. I don't know how many of those spiders we have left, but yes, hopefully. Anyway, if there are any... Have you ever been poisoned? Well, sure, I... Well, like, super duper poisoned? I guess it depends on, like, like eight. Have you ever been eight poisoned? <laughs> well, no. Eight is a lot of poison. I don't see how you can claim to be an expert in spiders without at least that much. I don't... Well, we're not clearly not going to get anything done here until you accomplish that. I'm beginning to see why they had to trick someone into teaching this class. <laughs> Alright, so we gotta, we gotta, like fight a, a super poison spider. Maybe a daddy nasty legs? No, they are pretty nasty looking. Oh, they're gonna do stench damage, not uh... Not poison. Uh, fart spider. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> That's like cold. Maybe a woodland's barking spider? And a striped sniper spider? Dangerous? Oh! Okay, so this. So the spider's, um. Not much. Honk. Oh, we can kill off another one of these. Well, I am 12 poison, I guess. Okay, and I need an item that will do six damage. I'm sure I got one somewhere around here. Or I could use this handmade pet pill. Or one of these. Yeah, we'll, we'll just use a battery. Lick the battery. <laughs> and then we can use orchestra blast. Orchestra strike again. And then we can shoot this.
Hopefully that's enough to qualify for their weird specific class. Did you get eight poison? Yes, it sucked. <laughs> it's way worse than getting four poison twice. It hurts like your blood is made of boiling Tabasco. And, e and even after you finish throwing up everything you had inside of you, you keep throwing up, so it feels like you're going to turn yourself inside out. Oh, that doesn't sound like fun. There are better ways to spend an afternoon yet. Anyway. Conclusion, spiders are, are a land of... What is it like finding, fighting? What is it like to fight nine spiders at the same time? Are you kids just straight up trying to get me killed? I bet they've never fought nine spiders at the same time. <sighs> no, I haven't. Nine spiders, nine spiders, nine spiders! Damn it. <laughs> nine spiders, nine spiders. Oh well. Well-armed graduate student. A grumbling man, young man with an unkempt beard emerges from a tiny office hidden somewhere in the lab and glares at you as he dons some protective gear. Alright. Oh, God. It's a... Quickly, bite him! Don't bite me! Bite, bite the grad student! <laughs> yeah, get him! <laughs> Let's see, do I have any, uh... This would be a great time to have saved, um... I think about as good as I'm gonna do is, um... Be able to use one of these batteries, have another AP, and then, like, just blast a few of these to death. Oh, they can't do what they were planning to do, so I think they just lose their turn, because I think they're all going to attack the the, uh, the well-armed graduate student. <laughs> so in that case, uh, let's um, just seize the day. And all these ones I reduced to like 1 HP will die when it's their turn next, I think. Clobber this one. All right, two of them have perished. And what that has five HP left, so we can probably throw a baseball or something at it to kill it. Yeah, we have baseballs, so batter up. <laughs> A lot of XP. I should probably check see what. Oh, okay, I have enough XP to get a new, uh, a new um, skill. Probably this. Hmm. Balance this out a bit more, and also give us one more max AP, which is really gonna be helpful. Let's just kill a lot more stuff at, t at once. 
Shut up, I defeated nine spiders. What was it like? It's like fighting three spiders three times, except you do it all at once instead of it one after the other. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, I could see that. Okay, that's it. Class is Get out of here. Oh, wait. Someone has to sign my course transcript. You're the teacher. You can sign it yourself. Oh. Huh. <laughs> you write your, your signature in the card, and unable to shake the feeling that you could have saved yourself a lot of trouble. You've completed your elective. Oh, well. Can we... Can we still fight the spiders? Release spiders! A little nozzle emerges from the front of the console and sprays some weird green liquid in your mouth. It tastes pretty rotten, but it makes you feel all tingly. All the knobs are set. Let's. Oh goodness! I don't. Uh, let's see. Thank you for the anonymous five dollar donation. Appreciate that so much. Alrighty. Well, we're gonna we're gonna have to lay the smack down on some spiders now. Sorry, Spider, you're just gonna get clobbered. 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 Well, if we wanna grind some pretty easy fights, those spiders are there. Roof access. Oh, there's pigeons here. A massive petrified pigeon poop. See how it feels. It feels disgusting. <laughs> this is definitely the most fustulent of the Grutch, grulches you've carrying around. This is where the pigeons do all their business. You aren't afraid of pigeons, but you're a little apprehensive about wandering into the middle of a huge crowd of them. Okay, well, it says a uh, four stench armor. I'm pretty sure we have, like, stench armor as part of our perks in general, so let's see. Yeah, so we need some of the two stench armor equipped to be able to. To access that. I want to say we probably have some gloves to do stench armor. Yep, we have a prototype car freshener. Pigeon eggs. A group of pigeons is called a flight, and a group of pigeon eggs is called a pile. <laughs> that's that's great. Shadow beer. That's darker than the, the darkest stout and more pretentious than the portentous porter. Huh. Hmm. Interesting. Whatever these machines do, th this one isn't doing. <laughs> Huh, interesting. Well. You talking to that please? Can I go in here please? Student ID, Martini identified. That's me. That's where the professor would sit if there was a professor here. It's a poster of a rock-focused fraternity. That might sound cool, but remember, rock music won't be invented for another 20 years or so.
One of the major projects of SIT's geology department is the study of hypercrystalline thomomorphic diorites, hence known to layman as hex rock. Hex rock has many fascinating properties. For more information, continue to the right and join the, and read the rest of the plinths. Shiny. Like other diorites, the specific min mineral composition and config configuration of hex rock varies from sample to sample. Some of these configurations have been observed to violate the known laws of physics, such as gravity. See display. <laughs> Other configurations have been observed to violate the known laws of this state, such as aggravated assault. <laughs> sample not available for safety reasons. Fair enough. Fair enough. A hex rock sample of the correct composition and sufficient mass can exert an influence over the non thermomorphic -thom ordinary boring rocks in the vicinity. This property is referred to as charisma. <laughs> I wonder if I get something from getting hit by these rocks for a while. Eh, maybe, I don't know. Perhaps most interestingly, some hex rock samples have been observed to be thomically entangled with other larger samples in such a way as to cause the larger hex rocks to materialize or dematerialize whenever the small switch hex rocks are interacted with C display. This appears to work regardless of distance or intervening obstruction, and sometimes a single switch hex rock exerts control over more than one target hex rock. I'll be honest with you, we haven't got the foggiest day of how this works, and some of us are kind of freaked out by it. Neat! Even a small hex rock of the correct composition, when placed in a Morton engine such as this one, can be used to generate an almost unlimited amount of electricity, albeit of low of to middling voltage. This particular sample, for instance, powers the ele elevator down to the department quarry. Unfortunately, attempts to artificially synthesize this type of hex rock have not yet been fruitful. Hmm. Despite what the sign says, there doesn't seem to actually be a hex rock in that engine thingamajig. I got a feeling I have to go to the the dorm the dorms for uh... oh there's actually like a row of desks can't get by because I'm still in the, the, the I'm still in the desks <laughs> security it's the most locked door you've ever you've ever encountered. <laughs> <laughs> the liberal arts department. <laughs> it's just a closet with the with the the jar. It's a nasty mop. My it's my nasty mop. <laughs> a photo of a bare necked pinup girl. Scandalous. Drink more soda! Some mechanically savvy vandal has increased the price of a soda to an exorbitant 50 meat. You open back of the machine and fiddle with the little gears and camshafts and such. You manage to get the price down to 30 meat. It's still way above the market value, but what are you gonna do? They've got a geographical monopoly. It's your meat to look at the array of available flavors. Ghost pepper, ice, bone, durian, or pork. The flavor you're most interested in is the flavor of getting your meat back. <laughs> uh, well, ghost pepper sounds interesting. Kachunk. Harm over f by five. That's not bad. Oh, that was where we came out of. Astronomy. Foo. This fountain, this drink, this drinking fountain seems to have developed a, a steam leak. <laughs> Paradox Lab. Access granted if and only if this door is closed. The laundry room is currently closed for repairs. We apologize for the inconvenience and ask that you please refrain from washing your socks in the drinking fountains. The barbecue wing. <laughs> Oh, hello. Scobbin is concentrated on their er, cooking. The 
sign up of the hatches. Steam tunnel access protective gear recommended, but not provided. So what, it's practically an ape hole. Spider wing maintenance access. To hex rock mines. Access to hex rock quarry is prohibited except for with her permission from the geology department or a very good reason. Oh, well, I guess we can't go on there yet. Or some hobo code. Oh, wait. Try ordering stuffed pepper style. Ooh, a secret menu item. This guy seems pretty content. Only one table. This place is either really exclusive or really unpopular. A stream for employees only. You're not an employee. No one is playing much fine, so I guess it wouldn't hurt. Flush the toilet! Yeah, XP! Okay, smarty pants, there's a sign over here that thinks it says employees must wash hands. If you're an employee, that means you, right? There we go, all clean and sanitary, which will go be extremely safe for the customers of this restaurant when you're serving them food later. During your shift, because you work here. Whatever, weirdo. The Pirate Ma Restaurant Manifesto. Huh. We refuse to be stifled and shackled by the narrow definition of uh, sandwich imposed by, to us by the man. By which we specifically referred to Charles Chipman, owner and proprietor of the Greasy Spoon upstairs. To that end, we have taken control of this secret basement, as well as whatever ingredients we can filch in or finagle, to bring you the true taste of freedom, unfettered by hoity toity cuisine conventions and municipal sanitation and hygiene requirements. Alrighty then. The girl behind the counter gives you a slight in the no kind of nod and wink. Haven't, you, haven't seen you in here before, pal. Welcome to the finest hash house in the whole underground restaurant scene. Underground restaurant scene? That's right, wait. You ain't a copper, are ya? Yeah, tell me if you are. No, I'm not a cop. Okay, cop aesthetic. In that case, we got no beef. Got no beef anyway, it's a fish place. Haha. <laughs> Poster on the wall there spells up the racket if you need an explainer. What can I get you? Forbidden Fission Soda. Hot Armbar by 2, Cold Armbar by 2, Spooky Armbar by 2, Your Stint Armbar by 2, and Your Sleaze Armbar by 2. That's pretty good. Uh, We're gonna buy a fish fish sandwich. Omelette style. Eggs and bread are not so different, I suppose. Because we use Muscle and Moxie fairly often, so might as well. Look at our current effects here. We've got, uh, from food, we got Moxie, so we can actually go ahead and, uh, do this to gain one muscle as well. Eat the omelet. Fried fish is not the best ingredient for one of these, but at least it's not as bad as green peppers. Thank you for the hydrate. <sighs> Protein and grease. Your muscles are fortified with egg and your joints are lubricated with fish oil. Yeah, jeez. Let's see what we have. Tools abandoned by some fleeing prankster, no doubt. Spray on asbestos. A chunk of lead. And our anarchist hardware. There are there are a few hot flies buzzing around this event. The sign has been scraped off of this door. Curious. Oh. It's like a secret lab. Face case for roaches? Gah, why? A nervous looking guy in his late 40s. He seems surprised to see you in his secret lab. Hi there, I'm Mar. Er, hi. I'm Rufus. How'd you find this place? I was just kind of exploring around the steam tunnels. Exploring, you know? Ah, yeah, that's a popular pastime around here. The kids call it hacking. I guess I shouldn't have, should have anticipated that when I set up the secret lab. Why do you have a secret lab? Is the department out of regular labs? I'm not actually supposed to be here at all. I used to teach here, but they let me go. Oh, what happened? Did they fire you for using the forbidden math? Not at all. 
SIT is the last place that would fire you for that. I was joking. They fired me because I didn't make tenure. I was too busy trying to find out what happened to my missing sibling to publish any original research. Well, that hardly seems fair. It's probably just as well. I don't think I was cut out for being a professor anyway. Department politics are maximally bogus, as the students would say. So you set up this hidden lab to continue to search for your sibling? Yes, basically, although I'm taking a more roundabout route towards it now. What happened to your sibling? They headed home when I was 14 to head north. Well, we called it West back then. They spreaded the- Oh! Their sibling is the character from the last game. I, I thought so! I, rec I recognized the name Rufus because it was your, uh, your little brother. They spearheaded the expedition that pushed the Transcontinental Railroad all the way to Frisco. Wow! Yeah, they were kind of famous for a while. I used to get postcards from them all the time, but then one day, poof! Just vanished off the face of the earth. I talked to all their friends from back then, but nobody knows where they went. My only guess is they decided to keep heading north and hop the ship. Couldn't get any passenger records dating that far back though, so it's pretty much as far as it leads. Hmm, that's too bad. What are you working on now? Well, this is going to sound crazy, but, you know, we have a saying here at SIT. Science that nobody understands is called magic, and magic and science that only one person understands is called mad science. I see, so you're, dab oh, you're doing a little dabbling in the forbidden arts, eh? Oh, no. I checked the rule book thoroughly, and nothing specifically forbids what I'm doing. <laughs> I get you, so what's your plan? Uh, well, I mean, I just met you, and I hesitate to get someone mixed up in this. Well, I'm pretty mixed up already. In the last few days, I've had to deal with fairies, time holes, shadow monsters, gross fishmen. You know about the fishmen? That's perfect. I can definitely use your help. I'm glad it wasn't the, f the fairies you're interested in. I am curious, but some other time, maybe. What I'm focused on now is pre predictive quantum telecommunications. I'm gonna need you to explain that to me. <laughs> Well, there's this new, this brand new field of f physics called quantum mechanics. It's only a couple of years old, but if some of the theories pan out, it can be staggering. But the specific part that I'm interested in is that quantum particles appear to be able to communicate over long distances instantaneously. And I think that this might be ex explanation for the magical concept of clair clairvoyance. Clairvoyance, you mean, lies in psychic stuff, tarot cards, and crystal balls? Crystal balls, yes, exactly. Trying to make a crystal ball that'll show me where my sibling is, and maybe even let me communicate with them. Neat, how can I help? Okay, well, all the fishmen in this region come from a single source called the Fish Mother. Sort of like a queen bee, you know? It's one creature that laid all the fishman eggs. Which is a little weird, actually, biologically speaking, because that indicates a dangerous lack of gen genetic diversity. What? See, honeybees have avoided inbreeding through an extremely high rate of genetic recombination. Fishmen don't have that advantage, so one would think inbreeding would. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, never mind. Sorry, I got a little sidetracked. The important thing is the fish mother is thought to have a sort of magical psychic link to all the fishmen. Psychic, gotcha. So, what do you need? Well, legend has it that fish mothers occasionally make huge, beautiful pearls. How they make them is probably too gross to think about. But my working theory is, if, if it has the right kind of fish mother DNA in it, I, may, I might be able to reconfigure it to make my own psychic link. I haven't understood basically anything you've said, so that sounds perfectly reasonable. You need me to get one of those pearls? <laughs> yeah, the fish feathers layer is down by the river, but the entrance is sort of a is a sort of organic valve. Ah, jeez, it's a huge butthole, isn't it? <laughs> I was gonna say cloaca, but yes, it's a huge butthole that keeps out anything that isn't related to the fish mother. It's just a big old butthole. So how do I get in? You aren't going to like it. I already don't like it. I can make a sort of disguise goop to cover you with. Swell. How much am I getting paid for this? I uh, don't actually have much meat left after setting up this lab. Maybe the Fish Mother's Lair has some treasure in it. I mean, definitely. The Fish Mother's Lair definitely has a whole lot of great treasure in it. Sure, I'll help. <laughs> great. In order to make the Fishman disguise goop, I'm going to need some Fishman eggs. About three pounds of them, according to my calculations. But if the eggs are in the fish mother's lair... No, the regular fishmen carry them around to keep an eye on them. They have a bunch of little hideouts all over SIT campus in Ocean City. Or rather, all under, I should say. Since they're mostly in the sewers. Well, this just keeps getting better and better. Here, you need one of these to open the manhole covers. Ooh. Modern sewers use Class C manhole covers, but these tool doesn't work on those. This one is for old-fashioned bee holes. <laughs> gotta open them up. Oh, gotta open up the bee holes. <laughs> Jesus Christ! 
intense armor, blah 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 no Wow these books are all way too advanced for me. Actually there's one under that's right up your alley. Third shelf, third to the left. You have the order of your bookshelf memorized? I don't have to memorize it. I understand the principles by which I arrange things and I never deviate from them. Got the gotcha. Harmonic frequency re reference. 90 hertz to 180 hertz. Look at the third shelf, and sure enough, the third book is eerily relevant to your interests. Thanks, Rufus. Hi, Mar. Bye, Mar. <laughs> what's this? A doer. What's a what's a doer? A container for fluids. What kind of fluids? Usually valuable scientific substances. Not that one, though. What's this one? Absinthe. Oh, c can I have it? If you want, sure. You carefully p pack up the doer for transit back to the purple door. It's a big pile composed of 80% garbage and 20% miscellaneous electrical parts. You find some useful things. Chunk of lead, 11 in 1 oil, a pa piece of scrap metal. And if we equip some stuff to get our moxie up, I think if we equip some of the uh, slacks here, we can probably get some other stuff too. Find a couple more useful bits and bobs. Nice. Do I have other ways to get our moxie up? I don't think I have a hat that gives me moxie, which is unfortunate and weird. I don't. No, no, no. Alright, well. What's this? If this label is to be believed, this is a crate of arcane hot plates. Can I have one of these hot plates? Sure, I got plenty. I, having access to that level of technology increased the odds that you survive helping me. That's very kind of you. You grab one of the hot plates before he does some more math and changes his mind. A portable convenience for chef magi who are bachelors who have been in prison for forbidden sorcery. Cook from the comfort of your room. Nice. Robot battle arena. What's the ro this robot battle arena door for? There, that's my... Robot Battle Arena? Question mark? <laughs> Why do you have a Robot Battle Arena? The fact that you even asked that question makes me think you've never understood the answer. How many robots are in there? They're capable of self-assembly and replication, so it's hard to say, and it's also critical you never accidentally leave the door open. It's, it, so I guess you can just grind against robots there if you really want to. Oh, hey, Molly. Someone has tapped into the steam pipe to power this radio. Cool. The rat waves at you as you approach. Hey there, little fella. The rat emits a few squeaks. What's shaking? The rat dashes into the hole and returns holding a tiny piece of cheese. He points at you, sweeping his arm broadly from left to right, then points at the cheese. He stares at you for a few seconds and eats the crumb. You want me to bring you some cheese? The rat nods and scurries around in a quick little circle. Alright, I'll see what I can do. Give him some squirrel cheese. The rat considers the squirrel cheese. He wrinkles his nose a little bit, but eventually decides to keep it. He yells it into his hole and emerges with a ring. It, it's still a matter of debate whether whether God plays plays dice with the universe, but it's unambiguous that this ring does. Fights will be extremely chaotic. Okay! Sorry about the whole squirrel thing. It squeaks as if it says no problem. Steam power. This will dry your clothes way faster than boiling them. This door is painted shut from this side. Oh, there's a little eldritch orb thing. Shadow mead. A BBQ wing maintenance access. A harsh buzzing sound in a shower sparks are only applied. The terminal must be broken. Hot wire it. Nice. A mass, a massive, a massive steam-powered freezer. It's probably full of jumbo shrimp and military intelligence. Am I right? Ooh, a ranged weapon. That's not my derringer. The freezer is empty, but you notice that the ice maker is not securely attached. Since leaving without any loot is certainly not an option, you take it. This come in handy if you like. If you like someone enough that you want their drink to be nice and cold, but don't like them enough to get close to them. <laughs> oh, a book. 
Short stories and long winters. I choose not to be cold. Fair enough. Alright. Spider wing maintenance access. Nothing. The Athena terminal seems to blow a fuse. The strange looking machine seems to be broken. A nondescript looking locker. A mechanical calculator. This is a mechanical calculator as distinct from an organic calculator, which is just a person who does arithmetic for money. Makes sense. Ah, this is the door, the test door that's we're told to disregard. Somebody found a, found a warm, if not particularly luxurious, place to sleep. This box says free shoes on it. You're not sure if it's an announcement or a political statement. It was just a regular free shoe sign. We got sneakers. Shoes for sneaky business and also tennis. <laughs> it's like doing a little tiptoe cartoon knit. Cartoon run there. I don't have any other kinds of cheese, so. Oh boy. Do you want to try fishing here? Sure. <laughs> I just caught a, mel a mellow yellow fin. Let's fish some more. Got a skin marked scaly fin. Oh, that sounds awesome. Got a grody dirt fish. <laughs> This is like a fishman spa. This fishman is doing his best impression of a crocodile. There's no fisherman in this particularly pool of bull and goo, but there's a massive, horribly slimy, wriggling golf ball sized eggs floating around, like the world's biggest and most awful glass of bubble tea. Uh, let's get some hot armor on. Uh, do I have any hot armor, like, just in general? Nostril Thomas. <laughs> well, let's see if I can muster up some hot armor. I get one hot armor there. Currently wearing warm, fireproof, riveted mildew jeans. Add the battery. Yes. You sew the you sew the battery into the line of your pocket. Jolts of electricity begin to crackle their way up and down your legs. Wee! <laughs> All right. So we have one one hot armor because of that. Can we get hot armor for many of this other stuff? Probably not these. Well, we can get two there. Maybe hat we have hot armor? Probably not. Oh, wait. We have that. It's one. It's three. Uh, we might not have enough. There might be some food or something we could eat. Or a potion or something that gives us hot armor. Let's see. Food. Hmm. 
haunted croutons. Oh, there we go. Ghost pepper uh, soda. That sounds terrible. You drink the soda in one big gulp, which is fortunate since it's so spicy, otherwise I'd have to stop after the first sip. Well, that's great. Um... Electrified, warm, fireproof, riveted, mildew jeans. Jesus. That's a mouthful. <laughs> Hundreds of lives in the palm of your hand. Disgusting, monstrous lives. These two fishermen are sharing a nasty soak. They're too relaxed to worry about you being here. Loving his bath and hot filth. Some classy music. Let's see if this is enough for Rufus here to... Um, maybe we don't have enough eggs. Well... <laughs> We're just sneaking around. Steam tunnel, okay. Finest snouts. You have never, you have never been less interested in the contents of a vending machine. Culinary science? No, it's not our, not our thing. Frozen food. Vision chips. There's a flyer for a local diner. Might be worth checking out. Fizz Ed. Darn it. Sleaze armor. I'll buy another one of these ghost pepper sodas because it actually seems it's really nice to be able to just have like hot armor like that, like whenever we want. Not sure if this is art, science, magic, or some combination of all three. A restroom. The sink is capable of pr providing an infinite amount of water. A steam powered toilet. You're, you don't see why the, you don't see these very often. It's not hard to imagine why. <laughs> Solid Foods Lab. A cult photon lab. Dr. Tiger Ballot. Talbot. I can't read. Tertiary Particle Lab. Dr. Lucy Spadger. Tiger Infinite Stroll. Low, low Energy Beverages Lab. Dr. Orville Backus. Advanced Have Form Lab. Professor Woodcock Niece. Wait, I'm here. It's doing its best, but this hall is too big to heat. I did focus the lab. Dr. Dianter Macedo, low energy solids lab. Split ecology lab. Professor Nancy Ariaza, ethical physics lab. Professor Kalista Prasad, divided beverages lab. Professor Samuel Freeling, double studies lab. Dr. Xerxes Halsey, secondary have lab. Professor Arthur Badger, Nonlinear Math Lab, Dr. Rasputina Bandy. I wonder if this is like all specifically here or if it's like just generates a bunch of garbage. <laughs> hmm. 
I wonder if it actually is infinite. Let's find out. I mean, they did say this is the infinite hallway. I'll give this joke a little longer to play out, <laughs> and then we'll probably just like do something else. Yeah, this seems like this is like procedurally generated in some way. Liquid zoology. <laughs> Divided food. Okay, let's um. This was the SID's math department. You can tell because there's a bunch of loose math flying around, making a ruckus. And I mean a physical ruckus, not the sort of ruckus you'd get when someone tries to argue that 0.999 repeating doesn't equal one. Schmooze the math. Hey, hey, how's it going? Great to see you all here. You're looking real fine tonight. Ooh, check out the denominator on that fraction. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh, hey, you've got a... Here, let me get that for you. You pluck an addition symbols out of the math and stroll away with the cheerful wave. That just watches you leave, completely nonplussed. Nice and smooth. Okay, it's this wing. We can go directly to Rufus's lab. A medium-sized chunk of sulfur laps up onto the bank. It smells pretty bad. Still it. Alright. Well, we can easily go back to Rufus now, so that's nice. Uh, let's see. Let's go back to Ocean City. There's like some, uh... Mahooga. Awooga, awooga. We'll add some booze we can give to a uh, fancy Dan here. Find this case of absinthe. Ah, that'll attract some dour artsy types. I love it. Found this cola. This will come in handy for any children want to get want, if any children want to get drunk here. <laughs> I think I still have the beer effect for more HP. Let's see. Maybe. Hmm. Or maybe I didn't get this after I went to the sleep. Hmm. All right, cool. All right, whatever. <laughs> Let's actually see if we can find any uh, more things in here. If I, if I got any new dates, it'll let me know. 
Oh, alright, that's fine. I think here was the basement where the, uh, there was a manhole of some kind. Oh yeah, let's go fishing. Handful of dirty water. Got we got a stained gar. And we got a filth herring. Mmm, my favorite. He stepped through the hole in the wall and down a short tunnel, merged in front of a whole crowd of yelling fishmen. It's also, this almost sends you into a panic until you realize they aren't yelling at you. They're yelling at two fishmen pummeling each other in a boxing ring. Looks like you've discovered a, a literally underground fighting league. Huh, okay. Uh. The first rule is glove, glove, glove. The second rule is also glove, glove, glove. This guy almost looks human apart from the gill flaps and big fishy lips. He's either commentating the boxing match or practicing to be a world-class gargler. Huh? We don't get many humans down here. Glor, glor, glor. You here to bet or fight? Ask about betting. How does betting work? It ain't com complexed. You place your bet on sh next round, and if the fighter you pick wins, I pay ya. Since you're human, I assume you're betting meat. I can cover that with reasonable amounts. It's why I'm around that whole match. <coughs> Excuse me. Let me take a drink real quick. Nah, we got no idea how long this fight's gonna go. It'd be days. Psh, grow some uh, confidence, kid. Well, a bet's a bet. Who you get a bet on, Jack? The Shark Sharky or Tommy Larkin? Tommy. Alright, five and Tommy, it's a bet. Round 22, let's go. The two fighters charge fiercely at each other. Sharky surprises Tommy with a left hook. They dance around, testing his other defenses. Sharky punches Tommy in the face really hard. Tommy bounces off the ropes and falls to the mat. Ishiko, Ishiko! Yep. Alright, cool. Oh, we're probably not gonna get any eggs down there. Hmm. Alright, let's see. We got we got we got the access to the manholes, so we should probably like wander around wander around trying to find uh, various uh, manholes. We need eight mysticality to unlock that. How's our stats and XP looking and all that? We should probably aim for this. It seems uh, pretty good. Hmm. Paper club salesman from earlier does another double take when he sees it. How's your documents, good buddy? Not flapping loose, I hope. Sorry, Pat. Sorry, Pass. I don't need a paper clip today. You're passing all right. On the offer of a lifetime, but that's all right. That's all right. I got. I got a good feeling that the next time I see you, meet, this that you see me, I'll be in the antique store next door. All right. Sure. Whatever. <laughs> Let's see, was there a main hole in here? Nuclear bomb, deal 10 is all enemies. Put the reactive material inside a regular bomb, making a new special, a special new kind of bomb. A deadly blend of old timey iconography and a newfangled atomic technology. In your face, Oppenheimer. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, was there one in here or not? I can't remember. 
Doesn't appear to be. Okay, um... What about the chop shop? I can't remember. Here, ha have a music lesson. Later. <laughs> oh, we're gonna go fishing in the water barrel. <laughs> Face grease. Oh boy. That sounds delightful. Filthy rag. All things you would expect to get out of like a junkyard like barrel. Ten, ten Lizzie grease gun. I'm gonna, like pick the park truck. This is where uh, Lizzie was. Every day on this calendar just says crimes. Antifreeze is delicious, but it's poison. <laughs> oh, wrong thing. Uh, let's see. Maybe Goldthwaite Park has a uh, has a manhole cover somewhere. Hmm. Drink plants while looking at plants. Yeah, makes sense. It's a it's a bold strategy. <laughs> the Joshua Tree, named after its discoverer, David E. Tree. fishing. This rock feels better about itself now. Must be nice. Let's see. Manhole, manhole, manhole. We're looking for manholes. Complimentary dihydrogen monoxide. Mix of potions. Discover your new favorite rock. Uh. <laughs> Check out this gigantic pendulum. Fishing. I'm definitely fishing here. <laughs> how do you even get? How did this even? How did I even get on the hook? I don't know. You tell me. We both know. Oh, hello. Shadow salad. Mmm. That sounds. Nice. Ah, I was wondering if there was a manhole cover in here. It's hobo code. I don't have enough hobo code knowledge yet. Let's fish. <laughs> Sorted grease. Yeah, the toilet. Ugh. Yeah, the toilet is a French idiom that. In uh, in this case, is being used as a literal phrase. Mmm. Got a dirty dogfish. <laughs> this is a fishman bar. This fishman is neither capable of nor interested in talking to you. This fish is the scaly silent type. You don't see able to get the bartender's attention. This fisherman came here to drink, not to talk to you. Oh, a barrel of olives. Fancy Dan would love to have this if he could manage to sneak it out of here. Uh, we probably can manage. 
Let me uh, put on my uh, my sick jazz slacks, and we'll st <laughs> steal the barrel. Steal an entire barrel of steal an entire barrel of olives. Hmm. Either a fishy looking guy or a guy looking fishy. Either way, it seems like he's getting an angry drunk on. Hey, uh, hey, buddy, what's up? Who oh, asked you? Blah. He takes a couple of fish man eggs out of his pocket and lobs them at the bartender. Hey, give me another! Blah. The bartender shoots him some side eye. Although technically, fish men are always doing that, and brings over another bottle of something. Ask him about his weird head. Try, you pause, trying to think of a more diplomatic, a more dip, diplomatic way to phrase that. Say, uh, couldn't help noticing. I ain't gonna take that from the likes of you, you and and what army? I ain't take nothing from nobody. Yeah, you tell him, buddy. Yeah, another thing. Blah, 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 blah. Another thing. That's right. You said it. That's right. There, I said. Hey, bartender, bring bring one over for my friend here. He pitches you, he pitches another couple of eggs to the bartender, who look, reluctantly brings you a forty-ounce bottle and a foul-looking mug. Is this brine? <laughs> Thinking you'll match me? I'll drink you under the table. Go for it. Despite this being an obviously terrible idea, you managed to down two and a half pints of raw sea wa salt water without throwing up. Immediately have a splitting headache. Your drinking buddy laughs as your pained expression. <laughs> Still standing. Not bad, bartender. Another round. You choked down another giant bottle of seawater. Despite your volume of s liquid sloshing around inside, your mouth feels like, entirely dry. And you're thirstier than you've ever been in your life. Someone is practicing jazz drum solos very nearby, possibly inside your skull. Stagger away from the table and out the door. Fortunately, you're already in the sewer, so it doesn't really matter where you throw up. Alright, so we have to get higher um, muscle. There's a few ways we can do that. Easiest being we have a ham we have a hamethyst uh, choker here, which gives us more. And there might also be some pants I have that can give me some muscle. I think there were some we could have bought back at the uh, university. I might have to buy those at some point because it seems like it'd be useful to have higher muscle on hand. For now, let's, we'll do that again and see if we can drink enough salt water to satisfy him. Five, six. Seven. Ah, you can literally feel your internal organs turning into jerky. The edges of your vision are going black. You manage to stay upright just long enough to see the fish he guy's head at the table. Then you rifle through his pockets and stagger out the door. With your mug still desperately clutched in your hand. As you're done throwing up, you take a little nap. An offhand item that deals your mysticality and stench damage to an opponent and also poisons him. Oh, y yay? <laughs> Good job, Hamethyst. Uh, okay. I'm just, I, I don't know how many of these row I need. But I'm essentially just kind of going around trying to find, uh... I can't remember if this guy's basement also has a manual cover or not. The door's locked, so I, can't, I guess we can't go down there anymore. I have, a, I have a. Let's see. Let's try the regular house. I hear have eight meat. Let's try it away. Whatever. I'm just trying to, like, do things. I don't think we can do anything with this yet. The throbbing ring of negative energy around a dark a pair of dark shorts. Yep, I was thinking there might be a manhole down here, but there appears to not be a manhole. All right, well let's see, Snackle Mills, maybe. Let's... Operator. I got a feeling there's not 
Oh. There's an orb, though. Shadow Bomb. Ooh. That's cool. She got the boardwalk, I guess. Can we have the we can we can get this. Act earlier in fights is actually really useful too. Crab clogs. Colorful clown pants. There exist certain objects that will you'll, you'll, you will only ever find on a clown, and these white pants with colorful polka dots are a pair of them. Plus seven stats. Or seven all stats. Let's see. Hmm. Well, I can get seven moxie with that. I probably need to try pretty hard to get the mysticality up. I can almost get up there because I can equip a, the hamethyst uh, choker to get the muscle. If I had another, if I had another Moxie, I could get this, but I don't think I can currently. Glowing ooze, mmm, yummy! I love that. It's fine. Bake him bacon stone brooch. Okay. Ring of intense caring. This is a much more expensive version of the rings they sell in hospital gift shops. Little, 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 little. Okay, eight mysticality. Let's see if we can swing that now. We might be able to if we can uh, find a choker that gives us mysticality or something. I'm almost certain I've got one. Some, yep. Yeah. All right, so we can use that. Get eight mysticality to unlock this door. The labyrinth. Of the Labyrinth of Met Metathon is not so difficult, really. Once you spend some time with it, you visualize its rooms and corridors, making a mental map of which paths bring you to dead ends and which is success. The, king tur the key turns decisively locked, and the cast iron head of Metathon gives you a little wink. All three heads are now unlocked. Ooh. What do we have here? It's like a... This miraculous little lamp has burned for 20 years and counting, king by single solitary vigil to the dying of the bank. Standing by the cash register, you fantasize about what it would like be to have a service job instead of whatever you do. Freelance uncursing. Oh, that's right. The drawer is sealed shut, and there's no, ob no obvious way to open it. There's nothing you can do with the cash register at all, in fact, other than to bang on, your, on the numerical keys as a toddler might. The metal door comes loose with a firm pull from your powerful force hands, but doing so is triggers the bank alarm. That's what I was trying to do. No wonder the bank banks are collapsing. This is all they've got in the till. Good night. Well, that seems a little uh, underwhelming for... Oh, I can actually get back here. I'm not sure if I could or not. Integrity, security, excellence, a corporate value for each head of the dog. There is no visible means of opening this monstrous vault door. Ow. <laughs> the 
The black has gotten green with age. Today we celebrate our opening of Sec Securibaris. Securibaris. Building and loan at Plunkett Street, Ocean City. Wait, I didn't look at what it said. <laughs> I did not read what it was said I was gonna do. <laughs> Apparently, it was saying drive a car into the vault. All right, I guess we'll come back at some point, or if I can figure out how to open it. Because apparently driving didn't work. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> right, let's put our stuff back on that we actually care about. find something interesting. Today saw the great opening of a new banking concern, Securbaris Building and Loan. Residents of Ocean City watched in appalled disgust as, during the opening ceremony, the maximum security vault door was installed backwards, sealing inside their savings and valuables for eternity. The bank's chairman reassured worried customers the mistake would not affect operations. What happened next? Ten minutes later, the bank was closed permanently. Banks can't trust them. Let's see. Hmm. Perhaps there's a manhole in the at the hobo camp to investigate. Um, shoo, me, 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 me. That's the rain cleared up. Gosh. Any hobo tips to share? Oh. Apparently I missed a, a bit of hobo code from this lady. Well, anyway, see you later. <laughs> hmm. Let's go here and let's see. Maybe the dam has a manhole somewhere I can go down. This, this would seem like the place to have a manhole. So it's as good as it looks. Let's see if the past construction site of this dam has. <laughs> oh, let's. Fine. Let's see if the past version has a manhole cover, perhaps.
All right, well. Just turns up again, this time lugging an old wooden crate. Here, take these, huh? What's the what these what? It's a case of antique bandages, they'll come in handy. But I can't use them. I'll have to keep them so I can force them off on another meat in the close to close the loop. You're just sticking me with a pointless errand I'll have to do later. Ugh, no dummy. Use these ones and ask Charles Wallace for the crate. Old bandages that Murray left in the room. That's where I got these. But didn't you get them from yourself, like I'm doing now? No, I use those. Look, just take them. Jeez, you got a lot to learn about causality. <laughs> Interesting. All right, well. Kind of checking around different places. Let's see. It's horrible fairies. A fairy mush tender. Fairy mush tender. Okay, they're just gonna make fairies appear. Sometimes the fight just takes care of itself. <laughs> Little mushrooms down. Some loose bits of a gun. Make any weapon into a gun. <laughs> I'll use your moxie to turn its damage. Interesting. There are definitely a lot of spiders in this hole. And I don't need to know if we need, don't think we need to find fight more spiders. Shadow elixir, all right. Let's find all sorts of like weird stuff. push through the woods in a small clearing, you discover a group of three vampires. So apparently you aren't allowed to discover anything good in any of these clearings. Well, I see three vampires, but there's one vampire, one bat, and one small cloud. So it could be a vampire, her pet bat, and the leftovers of a beans lunch. I assure you, we are all three vampires. What's the deal here? Are you demonstrating the vampire evolutionary line or something? What? You know, like the bat evolved out of the cloud and the humanoid vampire evolved out of the bat? No, it's... Is a bat a caveman vampire? No, if anything, this is more like the three, three states of vampire matter. What? You know, solid, liquid, and gas. Bats are liquid? Look, the metaphor is not a perfect one. Are we gonna fight or what? Honestly, I'd rather keep talking about vampire physics. This is interesting. If you, if you three are solid, liquid, and gas, what implies the exist What? That implies the existence of fourth kind of vampire, right? Look, I already said it's not a perfect. Well, actually, yes. That, that, now that you mention it, there is a fourth kind of vampire. A plasma vampire? Yes, when a vampire is destroyed by sunlight, they sometimes become a high-energy but short-lived vampiric spirit, which we call a moroi. Which, now that you mention it, is rather analogous to the plasma state of matter. Neat! Well done, I have never thought, thought of this before. You are very intelligent for a human. Ah, oh, heck. I was just kind of stalling for time, to be honest, but maybe bats are liquid. Everyone turns and looks at the bat, who shrugs wordlessly. <laughs> I should go find some other vampires with which to discuss the implications of these. Good evening, human. 
Vampires disappear into the woods, leaving behind the remains of their picnic. Cosmetic, cosmetic one. Sweet. <laughs> Well, that was a bust. Uh, let's go to the museum. I'm just trying to find places that might have manhole co manholes. You grit your teeth in concentration and shake your head violently. The fog clears from your mind just enough to give you one more move. That move is to flip the woman a very rude two-handed gesture. Her eyes whiten in shock as she stops singing. With that, you manage to rest enough control over your feet to turn and run away with your hands over your ears. These woods are haunted. I just get flipped them the bird. <laughs> Uh. Oh! Oh! Yeah, I haven't I haven't been at, back here since I um had the the past version of the hardware store guy deliver this uh, outhouse here, and now it is a time outhouse. So we get to go back in time and do stuff here, I guess. After I fish in this uh, uh Harvey Wallbanger, <laughs> fish in this this like water trough. A rusty cola can. Oh, sweet. I'll take that. I might save my ass one day. Or maybe even my bacon. This, this outhouse has another one of those time portals in it. The, because it's apparently impossible for us to, to make a game that doesn't include a blatant Day of the Tentacle reference. <laughs> the Village of Sandwich. Welcome to Sandwich. Don't break the law, please. It's discarded in newspaper since it's March 3rd, 1692. That's a few days before the last entry in that diary from Putnam House. Somebody led this horse to this water, but the horse is finishing the job itself. A water trough, fulfilling its destiny of hardening a horse. Better not, you might accidentally give the horse a lip piercing, and who knows and who even knows how long it'll be before those are fashionable. <laughs> it's fishing well then. Don't want, don't want to give your horse a lip piercing. <laughs> That's silly. I like that. <laughs> well, there wasn't much in there, but that's okay. Oh, hello. Come right in. Sorry, I didn't mean to intrude. Not at all. I'm always glad to have visitors when my husband is out riding the circuit. My name is Martini. A pleasure. I'm Teresa Danforth. A bunch of barrels. What an unusual outfit. Whereabouts are you from? Uh, I guess you'd say I'm from Ocean City. Oh, the big city. That must have been that must be much more exciting than our little village. Uh, don't sell this place short. The city is more modern, that's all. Right in the circuit? What's that mean? He's a judge for the county. Most of the little towns out this way are too small to have their own courthouse and judge. Stinky! Yes! I know you are, but what am I? <laughs> hey Ash. We are continuing playing this little game. We're currently in the past, in the, the village of Sandwich, or the town of Sandwich, whichever you prefer. That must take a while. Does it get lonely ways away? Oh, our boy Tom and I keep each other company vert, and I keep each other company vert well enough. This was still riding the circuit. Indeed, Clarence will be gone for many days, but our boy Tom and I keep each other company well enough. What's with all the barrels? Ooh, tattoo. You have to show me later. How, how it turned out. That's all the barrels. Uh, we won a year's supply of cream at the last county fair. Didn't expect them to give it to us all at once. None of us even particularly care for cream. Ah, okay, I'll have to look. Would you care for a ladleful or even a whole barrel? Uh, no thanks, I'm good. Talk to you later. I don't need your, don't need your rustic cream. This kid's a real reader. All the top, all the titles look pretty boring, though. Miss Danford gives you a cheerful nod. Your husband's still out riding the circle. Circuit? Yep, talk to you later. No secret passage. There's zero reason for you to expect there to be one. A nice clean wash basin, as one would hope it'd be. Time to fish in the wash basin. <laughs> not, not much sign of potion brewing here, unless tea counts. It's a lot of cream. The door to this house is locked. If only you had some way to unlock things that are locked. I don't know, like maybe a key? 
Uh oh. A regular church altar. One of the kids has left a gloopy jam sandwich lying on the corner. <laughs> the sign is written in crayon. Today is the trial of Patricia Williams, who stands accused of stealing Tom Danforth's pocket watch, making a dumb looking doll, wearing, writing Peter Proctor's a stinky rude word head on the wall of the outhouse. Huh. Group of three kids has got to run the girl holding an odd doll. Order, order. Come on, if we're going to have a trial, we got to do it properly. I don't see why we got to have a dumb old trial anyway. I all know she's guilty. I didn't do anything. Why are you so mean to me? Because you're weird and an outsider. I only live half a mile down the road. I was born here. Yeah, but your family's outsiders. Your father wasn't born here. My family's been here for like 60 generations. Closer to four, actually, but the larger point stands. Hey, you kids. What's going on here? Huh? Who are you? I've never seen you around here before. My name's Mar. I'm a traveler. Well, we're having a trial for a crybaby Patricia. I'm Tom, the, the judge. That's Delia, the jury, and Peter's the executioner. Executioner? Holy jeez, kid. Well, we're not going to literally execute her. Probably. My pa says you shouldn't decide on the punishment until after the conviction. Uh-huh. Well, how's it going? Not great. Patricia keeps crying instead of presenting any kind of proper defense. I see. Well, will you be my attorney? Attorney. Will you be my... Will you be a attorney? Uh, well, that's a good idea, actually. Then you can present the case, and she can cry as much as she wants. Hmm. <laughs> How's she gonna pay for it? My father is... Uh, my father ain't gonna lend attorney fees to some slanderizing crab baby. I guess I'll do a pro bono. Oh, thank you. Uh, so what's trial about? Defendant stands accused of three crimes. Stealing Tom Danford's... That's... That is my gold pocket watch. Facing the public outhouse with a very rude slogan about Peter Proctor and making a weird doll. I didn't do any of those things. You got the doll right there. Look, it's got three arms. That's weird. B but it was regular when I made it. Okay, okay. What do I need to do? Oh, we're at the part of the trial where defense would submit evidence that contradicts one of the charges. Hmm. Murder charges again? Stealing pocket watch, vandalizing the outhouse, making a weird and asymmetrical three arm doll. I promise I didn't. Promises don't count in the court of law. You gotta prove it. That's okay. I'll be uh, right back. You can't just leave. We're in the middle of trial. Yeah, but what if I have to go? That's what I'm saying. You can't. I mean, what if I have to go, you know? Oh, well, uh, look, I can't just unload in the middle of the church. <laughs> Jeez, alright, fine. Here's to spend the trial for a short recess. I'm gonna unload. So, the sign reads. Sandwich gazebo. Vagrants not welcome. That's not very friendly. Vandalize it. You look around to make sure nobody's watching. You scratch the knot off of the sign. Take that, authority. <laughs> Vag Sandwich gazebo. Vagrants welcome. Thanks to you. This is a root cellar, presumably. The doors are locked with an expensive German combina combination lock requiring a five-letter word. Well, I don't know um, what that word would be, so... A state-of-the-art toilet facility. <laughs> You poke your head inside. There's some graffiti scratching the wall. Peter Proctor's a stinky duty head. Oh, duty! <laughs> you make a copy of the graffito for your records. Peter Proctor's a stinky duty head. <laughs> Freaking duty. Oh, the horror. Proctor, our, fo our founder. Putnam, Marianne Putnam, Bartholomew Danforth, Patience Danforth, okay, well. Looks like this chessboard was abandoned mid-game. You consider the, the board for a moment, then make a move. Now white is winning. Too bad, black. It's, it's an Ross depicting several heiresses. Excuse me, can I help you with something? No thanks, I'm fine. What I'm getting is, why are you in my house? Oh, I was just looking around. <sighs> Look, I'm not one to be in hospital to uninvited guests, even total strangers. But I do have company at the moment, so if you excuse me? Oh, sure, no problem. I guess let's hide behind this. You hide you hide behind the Ross, hope, hoping the Proctors aren't gen, gen, genealogically Danish. Fortunately, Mrs. Proctor doesn't seem to have noticed your move. The conversation gradually returns to a less hushed, more easily eavesdroppable volume. Drop the those eaves. Did I mention we've we've been picking out some new furniture for the bedrooms? Oh, really? Yes, bureaus and amours and such. I found a delightful little nightstand for Peter's room. He even has a secret compartment in it. 
for when he's older and needs to hide sinful lithographs from us. How charming. How interesting. Miss Proctor suits you a stern look. Fortunately, she's too genteel to just throw you the heck out of the house. She returns our conversation, though, and a little too hush for you to hear. Okay, so. Surely it's not duty. We're gonna try duty. If it'll let us select, um. No, I don't think it's gonna let us select. Never mind. to Tom at the church playing with the other kids he seemed like a real smart cookie oh my yes he takes after his father I always go got his nose in a book It'd be nice if we got some spend more time together but the pocket watch Clarence got Tom for his birthday has helped yes a fine gold pocket watch to help keep track of, of when you'll be back Clarence said Clarence said Tom really cherishes do you, you know the boy says he wants to be buried with that watch buried with it ha <laughs> oh wow buried with it you say huh let's go forward in time, steal his watch, and then bring it back. <laughs> oh, what? Oh, yeah, I mean... Looks like that change you made to the sign had an effect. There's a hobo hanging out here eating sandwich cream right out of the jar. Oh, hi there. Enjoying the sandwich cream? Sure am. I can't get enough of this stuff. That's probably why everyone calls me Creamy Steve. <laughs> Makes sense? Yeah, probably, yeah. Best sandwich cream in the tri-state area right here. It's a traditional recipe. What about hobo code? Nice. Uh, how about the hobo camp? You want to go there? There you go. <laughs> you get some. You know, there's a hobo camp over by Ocean City. I bet they'd be interested in this cream. Oh, huh? You think so? I'd love to share this with other like-minded individuals. All right, bye. Hollow Tombstone, possible treasure. Oh, time to dig up a grave. Oh, we got his, uh... Look at that, Tom got his wish after all. He got buried with his watch. And now he stole it, so we can give it to him in the past. I have evidence that proves Patricia didn't, Patricia didn't steal the pocket watch. Well, then present it to the court. Here it is. This is your pocket watch, right? Hey, it is. Wow, thanks. Where'd you find it? Uh, I'd rather not say. It isn't evidence if you don't tell us where you found it. It might have been in her house or something. All right, well, I found it in your grave. What? I'm a time traveler from the future. I heard your mom say you loved the pocket watch so much. You want to be buried with it when you die. So I went back to my time and dug up your grave to see if you see if you were and you were and there it is that's crazy you're crazy possibly but it's true and the fact that you're buried with that watch Tom means that you eventually will have found it whenever you lost it so pretty sure didn't steal it Tom squints at the watch in thought then winds and holds it up to his ear it still works the finest craftsmanship still working after 236 years they won't they won't make them like that anymore okay but this doesn't prove pretty sure didn't take it maybe I found it in her house where she gave Dave will give it back to me or something, maybe, but it's a closed loop now. We can't ever know how you would have gotten your watch back, because now you got it back because I just gave it to you. And isn't that all you really wanted, was to get your watch back? You never really believed Patricia stole it. I would like to know what happened to it, but yeah, you're right. Sorry, Patricia, I hereby withdraw my accusation. <laughs> so where does that leave us? Since you solved the matter of the pocket watch, kind of. Patricia's got accused of vandalizing the dollhouse, the outhouse, and making a weird throne draw. Uh, I'll get back, I guess.
Peter Proctor is a stinky doo doo duty head. That beer is white. <laughs> hmm. You like the if you like this tub of daisies, I have good news. There are two others just like it. <laughs> yeah. One of the kids has left a goopy jam sandwich lying on the corner. Hmm. Hmm. Means I need to probably search. Shoulder and see the guard watching you. You're gonna have to distract him if you want to get away with tearing a page out of this book, and then you get away with the page you, and then get away with the page you took out of the books. You discreetly pull a bunch of pins out of the doll and drop them to the floor. Fortunately, it isn't quiet enough in here for the guard to hear that. Stargirl has a bunch of pins and beetles you know, stuck into it for some reason. Well, your skin is probably in um, pain from the, uh, the, you know, the tattoo. Pins are found, not found in the puppet, but are for demonstration purposes. Welcome to the Putnam House. Please don't touch the exhibits. That's about the exhibits. Uh, I guess that didn't, that won't work. Trick them into leaving. Hey buddy, sorry, I just got paid to stay in here and keep an eye on things. I don't actually know about the exhibits, so I guess that won't work. This game's silly. <laughs> Since I've been to the past, I can know that the splotches in here aren't blood, they're just jelly because someone just like left a sandwich on the altar there. And we know that these were made of daisies, and this is like, they're made for horrible potions! Sandwich posted the cones. First, very first tripartite. Outhouse. Feel the tough to use. It's very old. And these are the new ones. Wait a minute. Didn't this house have a cellar? It did. Oh. These ancient chalk marks are mostly rubbed away and indiscernible, but they might have been part of an ancient ritual circle. In the middle of the circle, I see the broken pieces of an old pocket watch. Was there actually witchcraft going on here after all? Spooky. Huh. Empty shells, just take trash. Oh boy, Shadow Rift! Whee! Mmm, do we have to eat mice? Do I have to kill them with, like, magic power? Hmm. 
<laughs> do a cat thing. Speaking of cat thing, hi Pookie. <laughs> Part of the nothingness is missing. I gotta figure out how to get this mouse further up. Hmm. There we go. What do we have here? An oversized ring of negative energy surrounding an oversized rat shape. Oh, that must be something I'm not really supposed to be yet. Because I found something similar to this elsewhere where I can't interact with it and I have to ask Jessica about it. It was a... I started hearing Danny DeVito. Okay, so I probably need to change the the who. And for me reading the dialogue to him talking about sandwiches. Funny enough, we are in a town called Sandwich, so it's even better. Let's see. It has been pointed out to us that this Ross has unluckily have been manufactured in the capital of the Pas de Salice Department of North France, so therefore it is merely a sparkling tapestry. Oh yeah, one. This is the second and this is the second floor, and there's the other half floor. Is keeping uh, Peter Peter's room despite the fact they have legal authority to search it. Kind of. Toys. Oh, this kid has his very own sculpture of a toy box. It's solid mahogany. Bend over, take a look in the mirror. Hi, Mar. <laughs> Bye, Mar. A custom child height window. This child's bed from 100 years ago is still nicer than any bed you've ever owned. The only thing inside is a sheet of paper, listing several things that have been taken away by Historical Society for Restoration and Cataloging. A bag of fancy glass marbles and steel ball bearings, a fake spider made of horse hair and copper wire, stuff like that. Nothing seems relevant to the trial. Check the hidden compartment. You reach inside the, you, you reach inside the, the drawer and feel around until you find a little catch that makes this, the secret compartment pop open. Oh, what's this? Severed ragdoll arm. Huh. This seems suspicious, seems suspicious, but isn't the problem with Purchase Doll that has too many arms? What is this? <laughs> hmm. Alright, so this says, um, black is winning, so I probably need to switch that to not black. I guess that won't work. Hmm. Hmm. Inside of a metal box. Hmm. Okay. This is the gift shop. 
Hakate is still hungrily lapping up the cream. They sell rubbing paper, which I already had bought, in, or I'll buy another just in case. Yeah, it's the, sand it's the sandwich museum. Of the, the, of the town is called Sandwich. <laughs> Home to a terrifying witch cult. To all the inhabitants were convicted and executed in witch trials in 1692. Come explore the town and learn more. Yep. Yeah. Don't break the law, please. This is where I figured out that we go we go back to the present and grave rob freaking uh, Tom's grave. To get his watch back. So that, he, that. Yeah. I have evidence concerning a doll, I guess? You guess? That doesn't sound very evidential. What did you find? Well, I found this little arm that looks like it was torn off a rag doll, but Patricia already has three. Let me see. Oh, yes, this is mine. Look. She holds up her doll, showing you the stitches where she fixed the hole left by the arm, torn arm. Wait, your doll was originally a regular forearm doll? Huh? I made it based on yours because I thought it was neat. Hang on, a forearm doll is regular in 1692? Not everywhere, but around here, yeah. I, I get so bored, I want something different. So I made a doll with four arms, but I'm not allowed to be different. So I had to tell Mom and Pa it was a regular fashion for dolls, and I don't know, it just became a thing. I think I get it. So you're mad because you thought Patricia was out different than you by having an asymmetric doll? Yeah, I'm sorry, Patricia. That wasn't fair. Your doll's really good. I like it better than mine. Oh, thanks. I forgive you, Delia. Our dolls can hug and make up. Say, that's funny. I just noticed the fabric on the missing doll arm has gone all stiff like it's really old or something. Yeah, they brought it back here from the future. Where did you find it? We haven't really resolved that. Who cares? Just a stupid rag doll. If your parents had any money, you could have had real dolls. This would make your own out of trash. I found it in a secret compartment in Peter's nightstand. W why you? Yeah, that figures. Not surprising the least. Charge dismissed. <laughs> so what's left? You cleared Patricia out in most charges, but she's still accused of vandalizing the outhouse. Does it still count as vandalism if it's true? Hey, yeah, it's vandalism. vandalism. Either way, just checking. Uh, I'll be right back. Is your butt just totally broken? <laughs> I bet everyone's butt is broken in the future. I bet nobody can afford a good working butts anymore. Stop making fun of my broken butt. It's a tragedy. Order, order in the butt. I mean court. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So I gotta figure out a way how to get in here or to otherwise do stuff in the, uh... No idea. Now white is winning, so let's change it. Let's change it back, and maybe that'll make something happen. So let's let's go. Make a wish. Fishing up a bit of currency. It's me. Just swell, sugar. Alright, thanks. This chessboard has clearly been left out on display, and as an argument for the battle for good and evil, White is winning, representing the triumph of the witch hunters over the town's terrifying witch cult. Okay, so it, they can just twist it every way, which way. Check the footnote. 
Yeah, whatever. I don't think there's anything else in this room, but I figure I might as well check. Nope, we found the doll arm in there. So now we, get, now we gotta figure out the other bit, which I'm almost certain is um, here out front at this point. <laughs> which I'm almost certain is like related to um, Nice. It's related to this building here. Hey, a bunch of pins fell on that doll. Sorry, get to pick up. What did you say? Yeah, this 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 music is deathly serious. So the pins fell that weird voodoo doll or whatever. That might be dangerous. Someone could step on him. Ah, oh, jeez. He goes to the display and starts pan picking up pins off the floor. Ah. Uh. Ten right, it matches the graffiti from the houses. From Delia Putnam's die. Ah, ah, oh, Delia, you're a, you're a mean little Delia. I have evidence that proves Patricia didn't write the graffiti. All right, let's see it then. Um, I have your two pieces of paper. This one is rubbed rubbed from the outhouse, showing the graffiti in question. Peter Proctor's a stinky. Yes, that's a graffiti. Girl, my father basically owns this crummy town. You won't get away from this slander, Patricia. Technically, it's libel, not slander. What's the other piece of paper? This is a page from someone's diary. Someone who clearly thinks Peter Proctor's a stinky duty head. And if you compare the handwriting to graffiti, they're a perfect match. Wow, they sure are. Whose diary is this? The story is from Delia Putnam. What? Give me that. You, this, wait a minute. I don't remember writing this. Hey, this is dated three days from now. This paper is really old, too. What's going on? I already told you guys, I'm from the future. I stole this from the museum. My diary was in the museum? <laughs> you are a stinky doo-doo head. So you admit that I wrote the graffiti. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't lie if it's true, right? Hey! Yes, it's correct. In that case, the charge against Patricia is hereby dropped. You do you do owe someone no apology, though, Delia. Yeah, not you, duty head. They mean Patricia. Sorry, Patricia. It was Peter I was mad at. I didn't mean to get you in trouble. It's okay. He is a duty head. Hey! What's next? Everything's been accounted for. Congratulations, Patricia. You've been acquitted of all charges. Oh, thank you. Thank, thank goodness. Thank you, Mara. No problem. I was happy to help. Is there anything we can do for you in turn? Well, there's one thing I was curious about. Do you kids act know anything about witches? Witches, you mean like black magic, consorting with the devil, that sort of thing? Yeah. <laughs> Check out this rube who thinks witches are real. <laughs> yeah, they're just scary stories. Chip parents tell their children to make them go to bed on time. So no witches, no witch trials, nothing like that? Nope, not that I ever heard of it. My dad travels the whole region in circuit courts. Hmm, okay, thanks. Today, the trial of Patricia Williams, who accused of blah 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 blah, stinky duty head. Burb. I don't know. Those are probably sour anyway. Hmm. 
Hudson Ross. You don't really have a reason to do that. Up yours, White. I don't think the, I don't think Hakate is the word we can use. Some history hitting scoundrel, no doubt. Oh jeez. You know now that the sign is not worth anything, actually. Nice gazebo. Vagrants, welcome. Conveniently toilet adjacent house. Uh, most conveniently toilet adjacent house. He was a duty head until the very end. You make a rubbing of the grave, so there's someone who will be really interested to see this, or at least I'll be very interested to see the look on his face when he sees this. He was a duty head until the very end. Looking for like five letter names or things. Throw meat in the well. Oh, I've been fishing meat out of the well. Like, we're, like, numerous, um, partly burned under extremely witchy circumstances. Hmm. Braid with it. Haha, <laughs> wow. Imagine that. Are, kids are hanging around chatting amicably. It's nice to see them all getting along. It's about a house key. Hey, can I borrow your key to your house? Uh, excuse me, I need it for a time traveling thing. They probably wanted to burglarize you and make a killing on the antiques market in the future. That wouldn't work. If they took something from now into the future, it would still be new. 
Antiques aren't valuable unless they go the long way around. Look, who actually... Look, why do I actually do you want the, my house key? Well, I'm not exactly sure, but apparently a house catches fire sometime in the future. I think it might be a good idea to prevent that. Wow, yeah, I agree with you. Fortunately, I lost my key when I was out playing in the countryside. Do you have some kind of magic future way to find lost keys? Hmm, well, maybe I can think of something, like wandering around. Show Peter the rubbing on his grave. Hey, Peter, come here a sec, huh? What do you want? I got something to show you from the future. Like I care about anything you have to show me from your dumb, poor future. <laughs> oh, you'll be interested in this. You hold up the, the rubbing of his tombstone and waggle it in front of his face. Hello, I'm Peter's grave. <laughs> Peter grabs a rubbing and stares at it. W what? That's right, kid. Duty head right there in your own gravestone. That's what happens when nobody respects you because you're an arrogant jerk to everyone all the time. B -b -b but, but you're young and you still got time to change. See what I'm saying? <sighs> okay, okay, fine. I'll try to be nicer to people. Good boy. <laughs> Just bullying a small child in the fucking past. <laughs> All right, so let's go to the map and we'll wander around see if we can find that key. We found some spores. It's not exactly what I was looking for. Hoping to find Ellie's lost house key. And again, you gave up after a short while. Finding a tiny 230-year-old key and many spiders of. Sp I'm like, maybe we'll come across something later to help. Some kind of lost metal finding device. Tell them it's clear a wild, wild goose chase. Well, let's see. Maybe the hardware store has something like that. I'll buy another, uh... Unfortunately, no. We can go into the past here, see if the other past person has anything interesting to sell. Oh, we can actually move what do you want instead of the sandwich we see him. The pets. Cave full of mushrooms? The mushroom cave, that's not a choice. Nobody goes mushroom picking there anymore on account of the monsters. Monsters? <laughs> well, that's the rumor. You asked me if someone just ate the wrong kind of mushroom and got a bad case of the Ghiblies. Well, we can't really do anything right now about... That anyway, so we can we can go back to the future or the present rather. Once we, once we can find a metal detector, we can uh, go back to find the key. So let's go to the mushroom cave and I guess go to the past. Hold on, I stepped in some kind of weird mushroom. Mmm. <laughs> yep. This outhouse is both is both from and leads to a simpler time. Ah, the cave is not full of mushrooms right now. Oh god, there's a lot of mushrooms. That temporal anomaly does not look inviting at all. Non-violence appears to be a non-option here. Violence, then. Oh yeah, that's right. We're in a time where uh, Molly doesn't exist. Taught those mushrooms a lesson you're not certain they ever actually had the capacity to remember or forget. <laughs> more, more malevolent moving mushroom men.
you. I just sit there totally being totally full of poison. <clears throat> Once again, I started superiority of mammals over mushrooms. So, the third and final group of hostile fungi. Knock the spores out of them. Okay, you need to perish. That one will perish as well. And what do you do? Mush Mother intends to deposit a fresh mushroom monstrosity in the field of battle. No, no feeding. It's a no feeding zone. It's about to deposit. Ugh. That was particularly unpleasant. Have this. Plus, I just want this battle to be over. There we go. You have reduced the number of ambulatory mushrooms in this cave to zero. Zero is the proper number. Ooh. Based on its unnatural appearance in Ari, since it's the source of the bad mushroom magic. There we go. No more mushroom magic. Whoever misplaced this axe apparently did not know that trees do not generally go and grow in caves. Nice. Alright, well, this place should be accessible via um, the, the present day now, because there's no more mushrooms. Nice. What we got in here? Ooh, glowing fungus. These fungi are all glowy. An orb. A shadow clarinet. <laughs> or maybe it's an oboe. Alright, well, cool, I guess. In that case, let's uh, go. Let's go back to the uh, hardware store. Let's get some XP for free. Go back to the past. Have him move the outhouse somewhere else. To the pet store. Pet store. Uh -huh, you may have seen the bait shop. Love that sense of humor you got there. Pet worms. Wait, where'd I get this? Rufus accidentally discarded this cable after it was chewed on by chewed on by a rat. Alright. It's the truly equivalent of pizza. Alright, cool. Okay, let's go to the pet store. Red cola, nah. Hey, the meat return has five meat in it. Lucky break. An outdoor, an outdoor time toilet. Grady's live bait. It's very compassionate. Nothing in this way except a vast abyss of nothingness, and you're not in the mood for one of those right now. Catch your next meal today. It's a barrel of wriggling slimy grubs. Yeah, a bar barrel chum. You don't want to be pals with it. This barrel is sealed, but from the smell, it's full of decaying shellfish. This barrel is full of dirt, but you're not sure there's something. But you're sure there's something nasty hiding in it. This one's full of pickles, probably for catching those fish that like eating pickles. There's a mouse trap set up here. It's on a mouse trap. Grady frowns. Hey, what's the big deal? I 
I just hate traps. Hmm. Click T. <laughs> he has no idea. This must be Grady. Welcome to Grady's Live Bait. I'm Grady, and this, this is my bait shop. Anything you need help with by any chance? Well, I'm always looking for people to dig up night crawlers for me. What are night crawlers? Pulls a handful of wriggling worms, which you always in your face. Gah, worms! You should be doing some worm hunting. We got a shovel already, so that's another one. For digging. Dig up, uh, let's see, call five. Five good sized night crawlers, and I'll make it worth your while. Here, you'll need this. It's funny, you know, you want to sniff. You want another sniff to refresh your memory? No, no, I've got it. I'll be back when I have your worms. Can I see what's for sale? Sure, can I shoot some minnows? Minnows? Yep, they wriggle quite vigorously. I assure you, you're irresistible to hungry fish. Uh, a grasshopper's got you. What a handful of grubs. Plump and juicy. Some leeches. This is awful. No worms yet, sorry. Oh, keep hunting. Oh, is it stinky? Stinky! You dug once the one that you dug, not some sort of random time and space. An actual wormhole. Good fronds are hard to find. The same mouse hole is still there. Pet the kitty. You give the you give the cat a little scratch behind its ears and begins to purr. Oddly purr. Ah, she likes you. Her name's Dottie, by the way. Pet her now. Dottie's boon is... Ooh. Thanks for... Thanks, Dottie. Give me some more moxie. With friends like Dottie, you'll find it pretty easy to make other friends. Yay! <laughs> Yay, friends! <clears throat> hmm. I'm just gonna look up where I find the uh, metal detector. If it's like not here yet, then. Oh. Okay. Well, I can go do that. I, I know where that is. So we have to go see Rufus, and he has a metal detector. Hey, you! Being a nerd! Who, me a nerd? Yes! A book reading reader weakling, you look like. This is nerd action. It's not tough like Jocelyn, which is us. I agree. That's baloney. I'm not a nerd. When at arm wrestling. You and the Jocelyn face off, elbows to the table. After a few minutes of clenched teeth straining, the two of you manage to remember the rules of arm wrestling and start the match. Jocelyn is a tough cookie, but eventually you beat him. Ha, so there, okay, fair is fairness. We admit that a nerd is not you. Thanks. <laughs> this case is full of cockroaches is awful, and you're not going to ask Rufus why he has it. One of those newfangled metal detectors. Hey Rufus, can I borrow your metal detector? Sure, if you have a good and specific reason for needing it. I need to find a key so I can stop a little girl's house from burning down 230 odd years ago. That's good enough for me, knock yourself out. <laughs> In that case, let's go back and close off this storyline. Let's see, it was, we gotta go to the hardware store, move the outhouse back to where it's at the sandwich museum. Greasy, squeeze them! Mmm, greasy rocks. My favorite. Oh wait, there's a worm here. Dig up the terrible creature and shove it in your pocket. This 
I love this game. Alright, see how much museum it is. Hey, there's your past stuff over there. He's your chance to hand over the crate of bandages, but wait a sec. Crazy, they haven't gotten the crate of bandages from Charlotte. The crate you have now is the one the feature you gave you, and they said they use those. Won't, won't giving yourself these bandages screw up the line line? Do it anyway. Here, take these, huh? These what? Let's get some antique bandages. They'll come in handy. But I can't use them. I have to keep them so I can force them off to another me in a closed loop. You're just sticking me at the pointless error and I'll have to do later. Oh, geez. Were you really such a whiner back then? So much so that you refused medical supplies for your own self? Good grief. How embarrassing. Ugh, no, dummy. Use these ones. And ask Charles Wallace for the crate of old bandages that Murray left in the resort room. That's where I got these. Or, well, that's where you would have gotten them if you'd gotten around to it. But since this is the same crate either way, it shouldn't matter as long as you're just... You say the same thing your future self said, right? But didn't you get them from yourself like I'm doing now? <laughs> For crying out loud, were you not even paying attention? This is mortifying. If you ever run into the future you again, you're going to have to apologize to them. No, I use those. Lying to yourself probably doesn't really count as lying, even if it's a different yourself. Look, just take them. Jeez, you got a lot to learn about causality. Okay, fine, jeez. <laughs> oh, yeah, we, we, have to wa we have to wander to find the key. Spend some time poking around in the woods near Sandwich Village with Rufus's metal detector and unearth a nearly impressive pile of trash before finding, finally finding what you hope is Delia's house key. Oh, that's actually, that's, then you write SI, Rufus, SIT seam tunnels on the metal detector and stick it in the mailbox. Perfect! Brush off as much of the loose rust as you can and get away with uh, turning the entire key into loose rust. Then slide into the keel and carefully, carefully turn it. The, the, the lock clicks open and then the key completely disintegrates. How convenient. You peek in the front door and look around. It looks like nobody's home, which makes sense considering the door was locked. Yeah, I'm not sure why I gave you the choice there. What knew you were going to choose Snoop? Yeah, for real. Hmm... Mm hmm this oil lamp is kind of uncomfortably close to the curtains. Be careful I pick up the oil lamp and set it on the mantelpiece. This seems much safer. Did you know that the oil in this kind of lamp comes out of the sperm whale's head? Tell me more. Okay, see, sperm whale fat renders down into pretty good lamp oil, better than other whales. But more importantly, they also have a reservoir full of really good oil in their heads. As much as 500 gallons of it. And nobody knows why or what it's for. So once people realize that sperm whales are really... Relatively populous within sailing distance of the colonial coast sparked an entire industry. The whaling industry in the colonies began in the 1640s, but that was a fair bit south of here. However, just, just two years ago in 1690, whalers started working out of the islands around Lieutenant Harbor, or rather, what would eventually become to be called Lieutenant Harbor after its accidental enlistment and promotion during the War of 1774. And within a hundred years, those islands became the whaling capital of the world. Until, of course, the whales ran out. But the industry was still able to, f to flounder around until the invention of kerosene in the 1850s. Anyway, the point being, this lamp is really state-of-the-art technology. That's very interesting. Thank you. Much better. No witch's brews here. Maybe a witch's stew? Probably just a regular person's stew. A nice antique dining table. Eventually. This supposed to be Delia's bed. Look looks like there's something behind it. Small steel lockbox with the name Delia planted on it. On second thought, messing with the contents of this box could cause some sort of vasty paradox. Decide to leave it be. Okay, I don't think there's anything else we can do with the kids there. Well, let's head back to the now not burnt uh, house. Putnam House, which has nothing particularly unusual about it except that witches live there. There's an old, an old painted plate on display here. This is the plate that used to be the Putnam's mantelpiece. It's held up nicely over the last 236 years. Black and the Plinth says this plate commemorates the founding of the town of Sandwich. On All Hallows Eve, how witchy can you get? It's just a closer look at a plate doesn't need to have a date on the painted filigree on the edge. 
31st October 1626. Interesting. Sorry, I'm afraid it was probably for regular cooking, but we're pretty sure it was also used for making small batch potions sometimes. Of course. Most have the pun most have the Putnam's family possessions having been stored for cataloging and preservation, but some notable pieces are on display here. Please do not touch. I have d definitely touched every single thing in this town now. See if I can find out anything about that. Um, it might be too old. Yeah, that was... yeah, I think that date's too old. Oh, wait, no. Wait. Oh, what do we like to look for archives for? It seems weird that it'd be here. The archive doesn't go back that far, but you do find an article about the village's 250th anniversary. It says that the town was founded by a name named Folk. And was considered a nice, if not unremarkable, village until traders found the town completely empty in early November 1692. Apart from one dark-eyed old man who joined them on the route back to Ocean City. After that, the town remained abandoned and undisturbed due to rumors of a hunting curse. Folk, huh? F-U-L-K-E. Let's try that. I don't think they gave us his actual name previously. Oh, wait. There's a stinky worm here. Dig it. Dig up the terrible creature. Mmm. Ah, I was wondering if there would be a worm here in the past. You don't know when you are, much less, much less where. That's fair. Can't argue with that. Something about a badger, I didn't really look at it very close. Ugh. Maybe not here, there's too much trash. <laughs> uh, maybe outside the distillery? We'll just kind of make our way around. Friggin' spores. Yep, there's another worm. Okay, we have all five worms, so we can go try to finish the uh, business at the museum. Brace this fool. Dang, that squirrel's fast. He crossed the finish line first by a hair. Both you and the squirrel collapsed by the lake, panting, sweating, laughing, clapping each other on the back. What a great day. Thanks, squirrel. <laughs> Racing a squirrel. Alright, so F-U-L-K-E? in the past, huh? Was that guy's name on this fucking gravestone all time? No, they didn't give his name, so it is F-U-L-K-E. They just said Proctor. They never listed his name. Maybe they did in this in the old version. I'm gonna double check it just to be sure. Nope. So you had to do that to find out the name so you can maybe open this.
Can't say it's surprising that nobody names their sons Folk anymore. Anyway, the cellar door's unlocked now. There's a golden pocket watch on the shelf. Hmm. Inside lid of this pocket watch is a grave to my son Tom. Well, that answers the question of what happened to Tom's watch originally, but in turn, raises some additional questions. Since you effectively duplicated the watch by bringing back the one from the future and giving it to Tom, it's probably best to leave this one here. Things get real weird if you give Tom this one as well. A shelf full of books, so old you can't even parse the titles, really none of them. Well, there's this one with blood on it. That probably means blood, and you're interested in blood. <laughs> It's a good thing human anatomy hasn't changed in the last 300 years. This book would be way out of date. Someone's chalked a magic ritual uh, circle on the cellar floor. It's ominous. You, fi you find some chalk on the nearby shelf. Erase the circle and read it all backwards. This should throw a wrench in someone's plans. Oh, yeah, I got a Steam achievement for that. So I guess this is no longer going to be a witch town because... Yeah, we just ruined all the witch stuff, maybe. <laughs> Welcome to the historical village of Sandwich, where the inhabitants keep history alive by living and working the same way people he here did centuries ago. I think we solved the town. This house has been the home for the Putnam family for hundreds of years. Feel free to ask about historical village life. This young lady looks cut quite a bit like Delia, though a little older. Hi, I'm Dorothy Putnam. Dolly to my friends. Hi, Dolly. I'm Martina. Are you related to Del Delia? That's right. She was my great aunt, except more greats than that. I thought so. You look just like, uh, just like someone who looks like a Delia. What? Never mind. Why your nickname? Is it short for Dorothy, or is it because of actual dolls? <laughs> it's a little of both. I make a lot of the souvenir rag dolls we have on sale here. Oh, do you have an interest in historical dolls? That would explain how you know know about my great Dahlia. Oh yeah, I totally would. In that case, yes I do. <laughs> I read her old diaries. Apparently three arms thing took took off after she and her friend Patricia got into a squabble of some kind. The passing traveler helped them make up. They became best friends after that. Oh, that's nice to hear. How did the kids how did things turn out for Delia and the Patricia and the rest of the kids? Did their diaries say? Uh let me think. Great Aunt Delia made a lot of dolls and eventually married a traveling trader. Sometimes she went out in the on on his route with them. Patricia got married to a big six from one of the outlying farms and they moved north to start a ranch. Tom Danford became a judge like his pop and duty head Peter became mayor, though it was basically by default. Nobody, nothing super interesting, but you know, nothing much was back then. They all did well enough for themselves. Oh, that's good. Thanks for the closure. What? Uh, nothing. <laughs> nothing. Nope, nope, nothing. What's it like being a historical reenactor? Honestly, it sounds kind of boring. Eh, it's not so bad. It's easy work, and I take the weekends off to go cut, to go cut loose in Ocean City with my friends. So it's not like I'm suffocating in this wolf rock year long. Can you imagine? Sheesh. <laughs> yeah. See you later. This horse trough is nearly 300 years old. The water's not that old, but you shouldn't drink it anyway. It's for the horses. We actually use this well for water. Please don't throw meat into it. Sandwiches Church also served as an Ersatz Town Hall, Courtroom, Racquetball Court, and Schoolhouse. This, this antique altar has been carefully maintained over the years. Yay, we saved the town! It's not like Witch Town. The wealthy Proctor family owned the biggest and most conveniently toilet adjacent house in the village. This old man looks a little familiar. Hi there. Hello there. Welcome, welcome to Sandwich. My name is Phil Proctor. I'm the mayor here. Any questions you might have about our little historical village, I'll be happy to answer. Any relation to Peter Proctor? Ah, you must have seen the graves in our cemetery. Yes, that Peter Proctor was my great, great, I think it's five or six greats, grandfather. We don't know much about him, but judging from the headstone, he must have been a character. And you could say that, er, I assume. Can I go in your house? I'm sorry, but I'll, I'd love to show you the place. We've got a beautiful tapestry featuring portra portraits of some of my ancestors and a lot of our other historical memorabilia. But you've run at a bad time. We're doing some renovation and restoration work, and it's a real mess inside. That's why I'm standing out here. I'm waiting for the electrician, or someone like him. Electrician? I thought you were all 18th century historical reenactors here. Oh, well, yes, technically. But I have a telephone for emergencies, and once a week after the patrons have left in the evening, 
We all get together in my parlor to listen to the loose the Looseners Castor Oil Flakes Musical Variety Hour on the radio. Interesting. <laughs> Anything about witchcraft? Witchcraft? Haha, <laughs> no. Nope, no witches around here. We filled the root cellar up with concrete purely because the house foundation was a little shaky. What's that got to do with nothing? Vanished mysteriously, presumed dead in 1692. He was kind of a jerk, but he tried. <laughs> well, I guess that's uh, sandwich all uh, figured out. It's no longer a witch trial place, it's just. The day for residents have been converted into a gift shop for your convenience. Why? Why not take home a three-armed ragdoll, a style that originally right to here became extremely popular statewide in the mid-1690s? It's also not like an old lady anymore. Still selling the same sandwich cream, though. <laughs> Kinda sad, I, I would buy one of these little dolls. Well, I guess that's sandwich taken care of. Go back to the hardware store. Change the uh. position of the outhouse that the person's gonna set up. To the pet store. Alright. And go back to the future. Go to the pet store. Go back in the past. Get this guy his worms. I'm done. Fantastic. Can't help but think that, re that revolting pay would be more appropriate, but Grady beats you to that thought by pulling a flower pot up from behind the counter and handing it to you with a grin. You got an item. Potted Nightcrawler. A nightcrawler in a vessel full of its own food, which is also its own waste. What? What? What even is this? Huh. <laughs> All right. I don't even remember why I came. Oh, I was looking for manhole covers to, uh, <laughs> got so off track. I was looking for manhole covers so that I could, um, I was looking for manhole covers so I could find fish eggs. And then I got a little, uh, distracted. Yeah, no, we're not gonna let you survive. Plunk.
Fish liver oil. Bucket of chum and a slapping trout. Being used as you being used to hit someone upside the face counts as swimming upstream. <laughs> what is this? Oh no! Why is this? Why is this an Amogus? <laughs> Why is that an Amogus? Why? Wow, these frat guys are super into geology. The entire frat house is covered from a single huge block of stone. Really nice craftsmanship, too. It must have taken forever. Not only did they sculpt a stone bar, they even did stone bottles and cups. That's a real dedication to an art. You're not sure whether this counts as a painting or a sculpture? Ask it. Darkberg talks to you for about an hour without actually clarifying the question of its identity. You ask where it gets all of its energy and it shows you. <laughs> You're not- yeah. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> the solid stone couch looks uncomfortable, but it's still on your top five frat house couches. Check under the stone cushions. It's a real struggle to lift them up, but you manage it. There's nothing on the hat rock. <laughs> it's hard to see what this is. A fridge, maybe, or an armoire? It isn't open. A solid stone. Where do you, where do they keep their food and or clothes? A bowl of stone fruit. You know, like peaches and plums. What about sticking to a theme? Sometimes you just gotta stick to a theme. Wow, this is incredible. Not only did this fraternity chisel a whole frat house out of stone and carved furniture to match, they even went so far as to sculpt a, bu a bunch of frat boy statues. Presumably they store them up here and haul them downstairs to fill up the space for parties. This is some kind of weird stone thing. Looks a bit like one of those newfangled televisions you've read about. Except triangular. Something, someone's sci science project. Maybe. Well, there's the hex stone. Hex rock. Frat guys must all be on vacation, so they probably won't mind if you borrow this. They can always pick it up from the classroom when they get back. Elevator Power Rock is a genre of music that will never become popular. <laughs> a lot of stuff quit working when you did that. Eh, they'll figure it out. Let's go to Mish the Fission Tips. Look, I got a prison for my jelly bean up in the big house. The big house? Wait, like a mansion? Jail, you dope. She's doing time of state because she went off to the track doing a bank job and gave a copper lead poisoning. Let's see here. She made me a license plate. 301178. And, and a handmade shiv and a bottle of toilet vodka. Can you add them and eat it? Oh, I miss her so much. Toilet vodka? Well, it's like bathtub gin, just, you know, more so. Oh, yeah. Molly's a lesbian. <laughs> oh. A wooden statue with a metal diving helmet for a head. A sad-looking hobo selling pencils. You seem down. Not getting any business? Nope. I thought this was a real good plan, too. College kids always need pencils, right? But I can't sell a dang one of these things. They get this mean look on their face too, a sort of pitying sneer like they think I'm super dumb and these must be dumb pencils that only write dumb answers or something. Well that's no good. He looks glum at the sidewalk and rattles his mug of pencils at you. The mug has I'm with stupid print on it with an arrow pointed towards the handle. Do you have any hobo coats to share? Oh you probably, won't, probably you wouldn't want any hobo coat I could give you. You'd probably just be dumb and wrong. I'd probably mix up the one that means free pie here with the one that means bottomless pit or something. Jeez man. Pit is pathetic by comparison. Alright. Sure. A man in a really slick suit, described as such because it is both expensive and covered in grease, is stuffing, stuffing his face.
This is Anna's glumly picking at a plate of food. Hi there, is something wrong? Oh, uh, well, I just moved out here for school, and this food is... I mean, it's fine, but it just isn't like what we had back at home. What's different about it? My dad worked at a barbecue sauce factory, so everything we ate was smothered in barbecue sauce. I thought I was ready for a new experience in colleges, but I'm so homesick. I can relate. For me, it was maple syrup. Keep smoking as food and frowning. Maybe I can help? Wow, really? That'd be swell. There's gotta be some barbecue sauce somewhere on campus, right? It's 1928 after all. You carry sauce cups around with you? Well, yeah, like I said, barbecue sauce is a really important part of my identity. <laughs> well, let's see what I can do. Uh, Floyd. Floyd Carbuncle. This is a grid that explains what kind of things are, are and are not sandwiches. It's surprising how often it airs on the side of sandwich. The kid behind the counter has a glassy-eyed stare traditional to all fast food employees, or rather, all of come to be known as fast food in about 23 years. You okay? Huh? Oh yeah, just, since all the students are gone, there practically hasn't been anything, anyone in here all day except for that one guy gorging himself. Who is he? I don't know, but he's in here every day, all day, and he's always eating. Sometimes other guys in suits come in and they whisper together all shifty like for, for a minute. And then the other guys leave and this guy keeps eating. It's freaking me out. What did they talk about? Look pal, I'm just working here part time to pay my way through college. Which in 1928 is completely feasible. I'm not getting involved in whatever that guy's deal is. I see. Well, it's on the menu. Burger style. Fish sandwich burger style. <laughs> Onion starfish. That sounds awful. Fish sandwich taco style. Fish, fish sandwich hot dog style. <laughs> is it still a hot dog if, it, if, a, if it's a big slab of fish instead of sausage? This restaurant says yes, but is it a sandwich? This restaurant all asks you to shut up. <laughs> but abuga. Wait a sec. Ah, uh, wooga. Oh, free meat. This trash can is sparklingly clean, probably from years of disuse. Some very muscular flies are buzzing around a pile of discarded protein powder. Oh, jeez. Sounds like a raucous party is happening inside. He's doing a little bit of grilling indoors. Hi, uh, is it safe to grill indoors like that? I mean, it's not my house, so whatever. Fair enough. Can't really get the taste I'm looking for though. Say, can you get Jimmy to do, do me a favor? I got a buddy over at Phi Upsilon Tau. His burgers always come out super good. Some kind of special wood chips or something. Could you go over there and get some for me? I gotta stay here and watch the queue. Sit kids dance to a different beat. This guy's still dancing in spite of obvious nausea. Cut, no, he's cut, he cut the rug. Ahead of his time. Disco dancing. This fry guy is throwing food at a makeshift dummy. His precision is uncanny. Hi, I'm Mar. What's up, pal? I'm Glordo. Hi, Glordo. You're really going to town on that training dummy. Yeah, I picked this up in the army. You were in the army? Yeah, I was in the Cola Wars. Saw things you want to believe. True horror. Wait, how old are you? 31. Huh. Well, I guess that explains your skill with throwing food. Learned that in the army? Yeah. He said there wasn't much to learn in so much to learn as being experimented on by military scientists with highly dubious ethics, pal. Oh, wow, what'd they do? Made me drink a bunch of experimental super soldier syrup. Crazy stuff. I barely remember any of what happened to me, but the nightmares will follow me forever. Jeez. Do you have any of that syrup left? Super soldier syrup? Yeah, I stole a whole case of it on my way out. Can I have some? <laughs> yeah, I can give you a dose, but not for free, pal. You gotta be a treat. A treat. I need three cups of triple mint tea. They got them at the Gold Thwaite Botanical Garden in Ocean City. Got, got it. Triple mint tea, got it. <laughs> this 
Berserk card is cleaner than most of the things near it. Uh, you got a balak balaklava and a baklava. <laughs> Please armor, huh? This music's really loud. I wish I wasn't in here right now trying to figure this out. I think I need like two more sleaze armor from somewhere. That works. A delicacy. Oh, sweet, sweet. It's nice, not as loud here. It's a weird shadow pocket or pouch or something. Shadow pickle. Oh wow, that's actually really strong. Might want to save that for like near the end of the game. One moxie and five range weapon damage? That's nutty. The fuse box has been stuffed full of celery. You don't trust any organization that stocks sacrifice that stockpiles that much margarine. Shelves of miscellaneous basement junk. Battery and a fuse. Gravy stained tools. This drum smells like vermouth. Take a closer sniff. Yep, it's vermouth, and you're keeping it. <laughs> Alright. You got a handful of dirty water. Let's fish some more! Old tools, presumably useful for various sewer-related purposes. Fish man church. Uh, that's... Oh. These fishmen are acting kind of strange. Well, stranger than usual. Well, as far as you can tell, given your limited experience with fishmen behavior patterns, maybe it has something to do with that weird altar over there. I got something for you there. Let's see, where was it? A nuclear bomb. And then we'll use sacks of ice to kill off all the fishmen.
Oh, everything's loud. Don't triangle me, you asshole. Oh, we destroyed it. You won. That's one triangle that won't be bothering any more fishmen. An offering full of jiggly, uh, an offering bowl full of jiggly, glistening fishman eggs. Oh boy, how many of these do we need? I wish I knew how many of these we need. To do list. Let's see if this is enough eggs for Rufus. How do you buy it? I don't know what you sell. Wares and such? Sure, let's see what you have. Good to hear, good to hear. Now hop on and follow me. Name's Owen, by the way. Owen Lobdale. Huh? Where's my wares? Are you wondering? Hey. Saw my store, pal. I don't care, man. I'm torn my back like some cargo ant. What's in the bindle, then? As soon as the rope is loose and a massive gust of wind roars out of the pit. Out and prepares the hobo in a parabolic arc at his destination. Huh. Might have been fun to do that. <laughs> it's a barrel of, it's a bit of a barrel of blockade over there. Oh fish of that. <laughs> what a waterlogged backpack. The reason this was underwater has been lost to history. A cruel prank? Disposal of evidence? Avant-garde juggling mishap? This poor student with sauce is your gain. Nice. Alright. Oh. Can you teach me any hobo code? Oh sure, do you know the one for free bed yet? Uh, anarchist hardware, okay. Finest tooth wax. Gauze pad, gymnast shoes. Cartwheel everywhere you go. Okay, I had to buy that. His Majesty's least favorite poems. <laughs> Someone published a multi volume set of every poem George V ever read in descending order of how much he liked them. This is the last book in the series. You cannot imagine a le le less interesting book. That sounds like the thing I should buy. No idea what these are. I already have one anyway. Sports drink, uh, whatever. Hobo King, Hobo King requests your presence. Uh, come again? There's a hobo camp outside Ocean City and the guy in charge heard your rich in beds. He asked me to give you this official summons. Oh hey, that sounds like a good deal. Can't use more than one or two of these myself anyway. I'll head out there, thanks. All right, well that's taken care of. We have to go back to Ocean City to get some uh, some tea anyway. At the uh, at Goldthwaite Park. I think I I think I need to go in here. So I need like three cups of this. Alright, let's go to back to the hobo camp. Pew pew! It's over lot about the shopkeeper from sit, you know, the bed guy. Oh hey, man, Mr. Friend, I never caught your name. Hi, I'm Mar. Thanks for pointing me here. Business is booming. Same stuff I could probably buy there. You 
you at for you at first a total stranger. I've gone out of your way to help hobos when the other people in this count this country and even the government itself would not. This is the crux of the problem that hobos are looked down upon when not overlooked entirely. I seek to remem remedy this. So help more ho help more hobos. He's from Hobokin. Of course he is. Well, let's see what this book was about. Okay, maybe it's someone else will like that. <laughs> let's cartwheel everywhere now. Let's see. Three cups of the tea. Let's see if the guy wants to talk to me about the, uh... Lots of just sources of easy XP now. <laughs> How's the grenade project coming? I threw all six of them, and three of them blew up my face. Hmm, there are six isn't too bad. I think I can still sell them. In exchange for your research, I'll give you a discount from now on. How much of a discount? 200 meat in total savings across all future purchases. Here you go. That seems less like a discount and more of a flat reward. I just don't like doing arithmetic. Alright, cool. That's one less quest. I think we have to go back to the frat, that one frat house, I think, uh, this one. Oh, well, you want to know if robots could be programmed to have a sense of team spirit? So we split into two teams and made this tennis ball to run us and set them to dislike each other? It seems to have worked. We should have taught them sportsmanship first. The students explain when the ro order robots shut off switch are. He ducked, dodge, and dive through a storm of hurled debris. We need to shut them down with only minor bruises. Maybe just stick to drawing, actually. <laughs> Did you bring my tree, pal? Yep, got it right here. Cleaner has a sign that says free. You find a spot next to the window for that horrid potted worm Greedy gave you. You hang your poster up, making your space even seem more like a, more like a messy dorm room. That's how I like it. You get tired of carrying the loose steam vent around, so you install it in the corner of the room. You set up Rufus's hot plate on your desk. Convenience, I name it science. And we have this kind of grody uh, recliner. Inherent stink. Ooh, stench armor. Hello, you awful little creature. <laughs> Coffee cake, that sounds cool. Well, punt. It's your little tentacle buddy. <laughs> this is so ridiculous. Let's go here next. Stench armor, jump the manhole. Yoink. Oh. The shark smells as good as it looks. I've heard you guys tending the barbecue here. 
Hi, what you doing? Queuing. What? It's a cute way of saying barbecue. And here, try one of these bad boys. A vegetable sausage. A sausage-shaped mass of leaves and mulch in a potato skin case. Huh. Uh, what is it? Special plant-based sausage I'm working on. Is it any good? I didn't call it a good boy just now. I figure I need another, I don't know, 80 or 90 years to really get it right. I see. Well, thanks all the same. No I should say, do you like the queue? Pointless secrecy. <laughs> Who's asking? Like the queue? Who's asking? Well, here, have one of these queuing forks. I got like 10 of them. Once people find out you're into queuing, start getting them for every birthday in Crimbo. Gosh, thanks. Hey, guy over at Zeta Omega Omicron said, send me over here to get some special kind of wood chips. Oh, sure, I know what you mean. When you want some mesquite, just shave a little bark off the mesquite tree over there. You gather some chips of bark, leaving the tree none more suitable where you hope. This guy is shivering, his teeth are chattering loudly. I was hanging out at that weird stone for friend. I love my jacket at the bar, I'm freezing. I guess there is a kind of unnatural chill in the air. I'm real susceptible to changes in the narrative atmosphere. <laughs> if you're headed in the direction of Lambda, Iota, Theta, could you stop by and grab my jacket for me? It's soft and comforting. Sure. This pot contains dozens of different kinds of flowers, all grafted together in some kind of weird smelling plant and stein. <laughs> Cat is rising around a pile of catnip in either agony or ecstasy. Get closer. If you avoid the flailing claws and gnashing teeth, then give him a little scratch under the chin. As you do, you see his color, which reads Sprig. New cat unlocked. Rub his belly now. I'll keep my current bean. Good job, Sprig. It's a shrubber man of some sort. What's this shrub you're working on? It's a new strain of super aloe. I think I've heard of aloe. That's a medical thing, right? Yep, it's great for burns and rashes and so on. Here, try some. Neat, thanks, Leaf. <laughs> this frat guy is tending a row of malty smelling plants. He looks busy. You don't really have a reason to bother him. This plant is really hopping. He's growing hops for beer. It doesn't seem like the, it doesn't seem like they even really live here. They just garden here. Oh, wrong one. It's just work called Run the Goblin. You power your way through a flurry of snapping towels, defending yourself by grabbing and throwing several bottles of hair oil, <laughs> kicking over a laundry cart full of jock straps, and, pan and pantsing a few of the attacking goblins, which, to remind you, are wholly asexual mushrooms on legs. So no worries about seeing anything R rated. <laughs> Which uh, doesn't explain the jock straps. Maybe they're just traditional. <laughs> it's still a fucking Amogus. Hey, there's the there's the dude's jacket. Fustulent Grulch. Ugh. That's not a not a pleasant sounding name or thing. That's m m much better. Hey, he's happy! Yay! Let's go to Rufus's lab now. We'll wander into a science lab and see that someone has left some kind of experimental magic reactor running unattended. Maybe they realized it was in a process of explosively overloading and ran away. Maybe she followed their example. Inspect. You inspect the reactor carefully and discovered a problem. It's being powered by electrically overcharged will o wisps. The field that keeps them contained isn't running at full power due to some faulty soldering in the control circuits. If it seems improbable to you that you would know enough about this sort of stuff to figure it out, just assume it was written in a notebook someone left on the table. You quickly skim the experimenter's notes, grab a soldering iron, and make the necessary repairs. Even the wisps are impressed by your intelligence and handiness. One of them gives you a, a grudging thumbs up from behind the reactor's tempered glass window. Free XP for literally nothing. I got the eggs. Oh great, let me just process these and oh whoops, I misplaced the decimal. I only needed 0.3 pounds of eggs. Well now we got plenty of the scoop, we can keep the extra eggs. Hooray. You also need this. 
This is on cheap tool has a city of pork camera stamped on it, leading you to wonder how exactly Rufus had it. Take it to the river bridge. Ru Rufus's fish goo. You've been covered in some goo that Rufus assures you is necessary. You suspect that this is just an ordinary rag, but you don't want to hurt Rufus's feelings by asking. Double hooray! Free meat. Doesn't probably make it really smoke in here though. Hey, that's how you know it's a party. Oh, thank fuck it's not as loud as what? For no grunting and shouting, there's even a brawl or sporting event taking place in this room. Possibly both. A young lady is operating a still here. You must be a chemical student, right? Good guess, but nope, I'm, I'm basically a hobo. I've been renting out my services in this portal still to make ends meet. That still doesn't look very portable. Oh, it's much lighter than you expect. I see. Well, that still doesn't look very portable. <laughs> oh, sure. Some say the booze related -like glyphs are the most useful ones. You know, there's a big hobo camp over near Ocean City. I bet your skills would be really popular there. Yeah, I heard about that. I'm saving up to buy a new hat first, though. I want to put on my best foot forward, you know? I seriously don't think they'd mind. I know, but it's for my own self-confidence. I wouldn't expect a woman who owns her own still to have issues with self-confidence. Oh, I don't drink this stuff. You could use it to de degrease industrial machinery. How much do you need for your hat? Uh, 87 meat. Okay, here you go. Oh, wow, are you sure? Yeah, that's no problem. Thank you so much. Come see me at the camp later, and I'll pay you back. Bye! <laughs> Jesus. Oh. Art. This is either a special toilet for a really tall guy named Art or a toilet hung by a genius. Toilet shards. Flush that one for XP. It's a fraternity's Camino wardrobe. Wire coat hanger. Most of the books in the shelf have been ruined, but not all of them. Piano repair for abject imbeciles. This gold plated door has a sign on it that says C Chutney. Who that is or why somebody who, who can afford a, a gold plated bedroom door would live in this dump is anyone's guess. Too intimidated by the door's opulence and it's deadbolt. Ah, oh, perfect.
maybe not. Barbecue wing. <laughs> Notice. Legal mixture of every flavor in the fountain. Mm. There's a manhole cover here, too. It's fish. An abandoned goldfish, my favorite. All sales revolting. Huh, I wonder if the underground restaurant upstairs knows there's even an underground or one down here. Seems a lie that you've asked. He plunks a tin bucket full of raw, chopped up fish parts on the counter, and garnishes it with a lemon wedge. Then he makes an expansive gesture as, as a, a like a used car salesman, and waggles all ten of his fingers at you. He takes your meat excitedly and pushes the bucket towards you, along with a bent tin fork and a hardly used paper napkin. I'm pretty sure you see one of the fish heads twitch as you pick it up the button bucket. He would turn behind his counter for something else to sell you. He folds up a fishing spear with the hole, still wriggling fish impaled on it. For his gestures and excited babbling, it seems like like you you get to keep the spear as the main selling point here. Sure, well, Bows graciously and hands you the spear. While he's distracted with your meat, you nonchalantly slide the fish off at the end of the spear and kick it away without him noticing. Fish liver oil. Reach behind the counter for something else to sell you. This time he puts another bucket of chum in the counter and gives a gurn and gives you a big grin and two thumbs up. Then he holds up both hands with fingers and then a fur hand. Uh, market price. Ew. He seems to be out of goods, but not wanting to turn away his best customer ever, he plops a, a big handful of fish egg man eggs on the counter. Probably don't need those, but... Woo! Oh, it's a stinky kitty! It can only be named Stinky. You can now pet Stinky to receive a boon. Don't need I don't need the boon, but hello Stinky, you beautiful baby. What is Oh let's fish you got enough nasty go already, no need to fish up more. You get the sense that these are actually the clean dishes. <laughs> he doesn't have anything else to sell, thank god. <laughs> that's that's amazing, I love that. This fountain appears to be hooked up to a supply of barbecue sauce instead of water. Oh, well, there we go. I mean, I guess it makes sense it's the barbecue wing. <laughs> God, it's such a stupid joke.
Powerful grit. Ah, sweet and smoky, just like Dad used to make. Well, just like the machines at Dad's factory used to make. Dad's job just was just making sure the rats didn't unionize. Well, enjoy. Click the pearl. Rat wants to spring his cheese. Let's go. Let's check out the chemicals place. Probably gonna be ending the stream soon at like six. <laughs> the perfect spear is carved from Mother Nature's favorite chemical, the rock. <laughs> Steam powered lamppost. We truly live in the future. Live a chemical, take a chemical. <laughs> That's funny, you can actually just kind of get chemicals you want or need. To make stuff. Nine things of powerful grit. That's what I was thinking of making is this this you're on mysterious miscellaneous chemicals so you can't make any more fancy potions chilled mouthwash cool only 80 of the boxes in this chart have been filled in Sandy martini identified that's me this is just scenery right now It's all very clean in here, or sparkly, or maybe both. This book must be pretty ancient. The pages are made of vellum. The book is titled A Complete and Practical Guide to the Various uh, Chemical Substances and the Properties for the Oof of Students in a Clough Room Setting. Fortunately, the pages are so old and stiff you can't even turn them. Well, shucks. You don't know what any of this equipment is for. It looks old, though. Hello. Oh, hello, how can, how can Professor Gilbert to helping you? Is it formulas or formulae? Formulae. Was that the only question to having? Oh, no, I'm also supposed to be taking a class here. Ah, good. Good, yes. Very exciting with the new student to having. So much chemicals will Professor Gilbert to teaching you. Great, where to start? Professor digs into a box under his desk and pulls out a large lump of crystals. Here, to looking at it. To knowing which element that is. Are you, um, Lemonite? Haha. <laughs> That's not even a thing, to, to guessing one even near getting you. That's sulfur. Shucks. Sulfur is a, di is a diamagnetic orthorhombric crystal to being. Also, multivalent and an elemental macronutrient. Should I be writing this down? Here, an experiment to doing with it. An experiment to, to throwing it in the river and back to coming with telling me the observation. Back to, okay, God, I think. So I'm guessing I have to go to the bridge here. On the walk across campus, a head pops out of a storm drain. <laughs> I haven't seen you around here before. Around the sewer? That's strange. I spent a fair amount of time in them. I threw out the greatest hoax ever perpetrated on the student body of the world. No, do tell. Spell damage perk. I don't seem to need textbooks for what I'm doing here. Don't you ever buy your textbooks new. And don't let them make you think that you gotta. Uh huh. Yeah. Now we'll go yourself. SIT Chemicals Department Dump Zone. You drop the sulfur and watch carefully. The, the yellow lump hits the surface of the water with a plop and sinks. Nothing else seems to happen. There's a fishing rod leaning against the railing. Maybe it was left here because something is wrong with it. 
Oh, we got a cursed fishing rod. So it's, it's a weapon. <laughs> the Eldritch runes etched in the fishing rod's handle suggest a sinister provenance. Who was the fisherman who wielded this rod, and what did they use the it, use it to catch? Oh, hobo code. I'm hiding behind the next piling to the left. Come say hello. Well, hi there. You must see my note from the other piling. My name's Walter. Hi, I'm Mara. You living under this bridge? For the moment. I'll probably move on soon, because SIT students keep throwing weird rocks down here. <laughs> but it's protected from the rain, and the fishing is good, so it's a pretty nice spot to camp for a while. What about the fishermen? Those fellows with the glowing eyes? They were a bit leery of me at first, but I guess they decided I was harmless. Maybe all the raw fish I've been handling rubbing, I've been handling rubbed off on me. Makes sense, I guess. <laughs> Do you know any hobo code you can teach me? Mostly fishing related ones, but sure, everyone should know the industrial chemicals dumping site sign in particular. Oh yeah, I bet you get real weird fish from there. Got one with two butts once. Do you mean tails? Nope. <laughs> Asking about fishing. Oh, perk, expert fishery. So you know a lot about fishing? I guess I picked up a trick or two. Looking for some pointers? Sure, that'd be great. So far I've figured out you can hold on to the long, stiff part of the pole and dangle the sharp wire thing in the water. Well, there's a sentence that stopped being a double entendre real fast. <laughs> Here, let me explain that on that knowledge bit. Thanks! If you're thinking about moving anyway, there's a hobo camp on the outskirts of Ocean City. I could have used some of your fishing acumen. I just use regular tackle, but that sounds like a pretty good deal. I'll head out there directly. Nice. Adopt a bank. This section of the bank is kept clean and safe by the fine folks at the SIT Chemicals Department. Oh, no! Hello, Jedi. Thank you for the raid. Welcome, everybody. We're, um... Uh, Near the tail end of the stream for right now, because it's probably about dinner time. But welcome, we are playing some uh, Shadows Over Loathing, and I'm doing cartwheels. <laughs> How was your stream, Jedi? What'd you do? Let's, let's head back to the chemicals department. Stinky Raid! Doing pretty good! Playing this game, I've been almost six hours this uh, stream. A little longer than I was expecting, but ooh, Pokemon, nice. Hope you had a lot of fun, caught some cool mons. Nice. All right, Professor. Hi, hello. To going your experiment, how is it? I dropped the sulfur in the river. Yes, good. And what did it? And what did it? Well, nothing much really. It got wet and sank. Haha, <laughs> yes. Sulfur has density about twice as much as water, and non-reactive to being with a normal circumstance. You look in the box again and pull out a lump of metal with a, st a structure of weird spiraling squares and an iridescent radio sheen. How about that? To knowing what this is? <laughs> Bibsmoth, Bisquick, or Bipsmith? <laughs> Bibsmoth? Close. Bismuth. Ah, right. This one is a, a rhombohedral structure of crystals, and is the most diamagnetic of all to being. Also, it's very much less of poisonous than the others like it. It's very pretty. That color is from thick, this variation in oxide layer being. Here, go to the river and putting it. Th th this, this goblin scientist dude wants us to throw things in the river. Oh, do you ca which, which cool ones did you catch? Did you catch any, like, hard to find ones? You wander through a doorway marked Department of Esoteric and Forbidden Mathematics and immediately get lost, despite the fact that it was a single straight doorway without any intersections. The walls and floor meet at weird angles, and I, and I don't mention the ceiling because there isn't one, just another wall. As you're desperately trying to keep your cool and, and figure out your way out of here, an office door opens and a cloud of irrational numbers seep out. So irrational you might as well call them insane. Oh, got numbers! We got a lot, we got a lot of numbers! Prime Mover intends to set all combatant stats to random prime numbers. Algebra Vortex is going to raise all of its allies' stats and lower all your party stats by one. Well, let's start with, uh, Sacks of Violence! Mm. 
the workers to strike uh, that one, and then we'll shoot this congruence cascade with our gun. Plunk. And then, t and then uh, Molly's just gonna just blast the shit out of this. The Tommy gun. Ooh. See, that's good too. Because, like, I think if you cut the terror raids or whatever, you get some, you get hidden abilities and all that. We got an item, loose integers. We got a Mobius cookie and a mechanical calculator. Neat. Fighting math. Fun and profit. I will go. Oh, I gotta, I have to go up top and throw the, uh, the bismuth in the river. It's the bit, you drop the bismuth in the river. It goes kaplunk and sinks quite rapidly. Ooh, nice, yep. This water here, and y'all, and you have a fishing rod. Surely these things can be used together. Let's go fishing. Cursed fishing rod. Ooh, the doggos. That's about, that is the important part. Let's keep fishing. You caught, you caught a radioactive trumpeting sack butt. <laughs> a three-eyed pickle inspector fish. <laughs> God damn it. That's silly. All right, well, let's see what the sign, the uh, professor has to say about Bismuth. You wander into an empty classroom and find a blackboard covered with complex physics equations. Exercise with it. You pull the blackboard off the wall, deadlift it a few times, and put it back. <laughs> Hi, hello to going your experiment. How is it? I dropped the bismuth in the river. Yes, yes, and? Well, it sank faster than the sulfur. Correct. Bismuth nearly nearly to sulfur. Five times the density to having. Anything other? Not that I noticed. Yes, bismuth, bismuth only when very hot in water, deracting. Good job. Thanks. Fix at the box again. This time pulls out a lump of silver gray metal. That's, um... Haha. <laughs> Don't... Do not to worrying. Professor Gilbert, not to guessing you this one. Practically everyone... Ev practically everything is a silver gray metal to being... Oof. This to being magnesium. The other one's unlike this... Paramagnetic A1. With hexagonal crystals close packed. Also, there is so much of it. 13% of this whole plant is is that of to making of it. Huh. Now you have it. This one goes to the river too. Yes, yes. To watching closely. Back to the river. <laughs> this guy wants to just throw things in the river to see what happens. Eh. I don't have a high enough mysticality. In this second. Nawooga! You drop the magnesium, watch it closely as it sinks. It doesn't seem to go as quick as Bismuth did. That's about it. Hmm. Alright. Decided to take a shortcut between two of the two of the university buildings. It's a little dark and spooky in there, but nothing to be scared of really. Oh, until you hear a manhole cover scraping open and turn to see a fishman glaring at you as it starts to climb out. Slam the cover shut! Grab the edge of the manhole cover, and with a mighty heave, you flip it over onto the really quite surprised fishman, knocking it back down the hole. More specifically, knocking into the second fishman, who was halfway up the ladder, and then the two of them fall on top of the third fishman, who was waiting at the bottom of the ladder. There's a whole lot of screaming and splashing involved, but after you close the manhole properly, it's muffled enough to not bother anyone. Suck it, fishman! <laughs> Right, let's switch our way of walking back to something else. We got gymnast shoes, uh, we got crab clogs. <laughs> I dropped the magnesium in the river. Good, yes, and so? It seemed to be about as dense as the sulfur. True, yes, less slightly, but close. Are you learning so much to drawing a conclusion? My conclusion is that you're basically tricking me into throwing away a bunch of trash for you. <laughs> this is astute. A what? A time for the next lesson of you. I'm not throwing anything else in the river. No, no, a box is empty. The next lesson will figure out how complex chemical to producing. Okay, that sounds interesting. Good, yes. A mind of inquiring scientific is very important to having. The equipment over there, you are seeing it? Yes, it looks really antiquated. Yes, back to a basic. Not just some chemical, but to all chemical. Huh, that's a pretty good pun. <laughs> what? 
Anyway, go to figuring those out, and I chrome polished it. Synthesizing, chrome polish, got it. Archaically experiment. Umberlane softening juice. That doesn't seem very useful, at least not to any targets you'd like to be in anytime soon. Make something, let's see. What do you want to start with? The first topper. Alright, what's next? The first topper. First topper. First topper. Malung. <laughs> you decant the mixture into a vial and run some tests on various. It appears to me that you made some sort of baloney bleaching juice. Softening juice. That your stick is erased as though it never happened. A, crumb for, a polish for chrome should be making over an experiment equipment here to think of how to do with it. Hmm. Okay, none of those symbols don't match any on the board either, so. This is just scenery right now. A glass deodorizing juice. I'm just kind of guessing because I don't really know what to really do. A bunch of arsenic. Smoke removing juice, all right. Glass purifying juice. Fourth hopper is empty. Chalk strengthening juice, all right, no. Vivifying juice, whatever. I don't know what that even means. Bronze bleaching juice. Hmm. Bronze softening juice. I don't know you really wanted that. Unless. Oh. I was thinking to use that on there and then, like, break it or something. Straightening juice. Hmm. Oh, I, I probably think some sort of like vellum softening juice. Let's try, uh... That's polishing, no, let's see, nope. Vellum removing juice. No, that's not gonna let us do anything, alright. I 
Asbestos purifying juice. Hmm. Two, two, one, one. Asbestos. No. Two, two. Purify. I'm sure I'll grab that. Two. Oh, well, that doesn't do anything. I don't even know if I'm even on, like, the right track. Deodorizing juice. Hmm. I'm gonna look this up real quick. I'm per I'm almost certain there's like. I was close. You have to make vellum softener, so I was on the right track. I, I at least don't feel too bad knowing I was actually on the right track. So it was two, one, one, two. So yeah, we 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 were close. So I'll ta I'll take that. I don't mind looking that up and fi figuring it out. Carefully drills the vellum softener in the book, rendering speeches as soft and supple as they were born, I mean bound. Someone left a book a list of alchemical symbols and various substances they represent. That third opera is supposed to be contained arsenic, it turns out. Hmm. Any idea where I can find some arsenic? Oh, are we having our is it, are we arsenic to having out of? Yes, the hopper is empty. What that is not to doing? Professor Gilbert will will love our records to checking a moment. They pull out a binder labeled Very Poison's Log and flip it to the back. Aha, it is that Crotchels again. The what now? Eleven Crotchels, a student, a very much arsenic fan of some reason. Maybe he hasn't left his house. You are to, you are to going and asking. Oh, we got le mercury, lead, and arsenic, huh? According to the book, there kind of corresponds to mercury, lead, arsenic, and something else.
Rubber revivifying, huh? The rock. Baloney bleaching juice. I gotta look that back up again. I feel I feel like I'm missing something here. For those without a brain who chose chemistry. That's what we have to do for it. I don't know how you would have figured that out. I mean, I know the statue out in the, uh... I know the statue out in the hall is, um... Made of bronze. You splash a re reviver on the statue, and gradually the metallic bronze color turns to more regular flesh tones. Oh, what else are clothes? Clothes tones. Oh, goodness me. Is it Monday already? It's Thursday, sir. Thursday, 1928. Well, doff it all. I know I would have left an arm. Uh, to forgive me for not introducing myself. I am Dr. Ambrose Adams. I know I read it on your plaque. Plaque? Marvelous. How very kind of them. My name is Martini. A pluffer indeed. 1920, you say? That would make it, hmm, 205 years. So much for the faculty luncheon. Did you bronze yourself? Deliberately? Yes, quite faux. My new formula required testing, you see, and I have not I had no plans of particularly import for the weekend. I thought perhaps I would skip ahead a bit. <laughs> Graduate student was instructed to wake me if he comes asking for a letter of recommendation. I just asked some rather stern words from him. He's probably dead. Ah, of course. Well then. I, sh I shall call that as just desserts. Anyway, welcome to the future. Thank you, yes indeed. I find myself rather excited for the prospect, you know. Has anything good been invented? I are working on something called television. Apparently it's like the moving pictures, except you'll be able to have one in your own home. Oh, I must say, that sounds ridiculous. Who ever heard of a moving picture? Wow, yeah, you missed a lot. I suppose I am in need of a guide. My I imposed to accompany you? Sure. Sure, in fact, there's something you might be able to help me with. Oh, pray tell. I've got a chemicals assignment that, that's giving me some trouble. Are you familiar with the old alchemy symbols? Haha, <laughs> young friend, is a feline acquainted with its own anus? It's good to keep a girl waiting. Alright, so now we got this professor dude as our companion, apparently. Astradolini multiambelic. Are there still... Are there still in use in modern times? I would have thought the technology would have been much more advanced by now. 
class I'm taking is pretty introductory. The professor said he was uh, starting with the basics. Ah, I see. Well, that's quite reasonable. Seems to be the trouble. That's not presumptive. I don't know what the symbols go, what's supposed to go in there. The book here doesn't list that symbol. Oh, does it not? How embarrassing! Pray let me to correct it. He pulls a cool pen and a small ink blot out of his pocket to start writing in the book. Or er, should he be doing that? Why not? It's my book after all. Still in good condition. I'm pleased to see. That is the advantage of a proper vellum page. Of vellum page of our paper, of course. And my colleagues made fun of me for being old-fashioned. Or oh, I don't see their shiny paper books in this classroom, huh? There you go. Duly corrected. Stands for lithium. Alright, now we gotta talk to you. Do you know where I can get some lithium? Lithium? Hmm, that is tricky for to getting. Be to knowing. Professor Gobo did did to hearing about a soda company that put lithium in the kit sodas was a year previous. What? Why? What, lithium to make you thirsty. A feedback loop of very profit. Unfortunately, lithium also you very confused to making, and your bowels either none all, at all or way too much. The business they to going out of. Well, rats. Ah, but the factory in Ocean City is still where it is. It's perhaps the quantity of lithium there you are finding. All right. Well. Yeah. Give me a sec to. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, I'm going to end my stream now. I was I was planning on doing it sooner, but I got a little carried away with this. So let's end the stream for now. And I will be back in a little bit to continue and play some Minecraft and stuff. But for now, that is where our stream is ending. Thank you so much, everyone, for the raids and the follows and just hanging out with me. I appreciate y'all very much. Oh, excuse me. Like I just was saying, next stream tonight is going to be Minecraft, and we're going to just be chilling out, doing some stuff in a sky, basically skyblock kind of setting, and just having a good time. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, uh, tune in later. I'm going to aim for like 7, but it might be closer to 7.30 when I start back up again. But I it won't be too much longer in the future, but let's see if I can drop a raid on someone real fast. Let's see. Oh, absolutely. We can drop in and say hi to my good friend Mochi. She's playing Borderlands 2 with some friends. And I we'll just want to pass some of the good cheer on over. So I'm going to end my stream and start a raid to uh, uh, Mochi Zuki. So. Say hi, say hi when you get there.